Everybody, it is Friday, April twenty second, twenty sixteen, and what time is it? It's game time, and you're listening to John and Ted's excellent GameCast episode number twenty nine. And I'm here with my good friend and co-host Jonathan Nado. What is up, dude? Hello, everybody. It's nice to be back. Well, I've always been here, but Ted's back. Yes, so. and, and I'm your host, <laughs> Ted Edwards, CEO of Rappercal, and I am back. Kind of like uh, Star Wars, uh, Return of the Ted guy, <laughs> instead of Return of the <laughs> Jedi. I'm, I'm back. It's, it's good to be back, man, after a two-week hiatus, I would have to say. And then, you know, a couple, a week over in London, and then uh, a couple weeks in Indonesia. Yeah, just, yeah uh, crazy. Ra- randomly. Uh, so I'm back, and it, it's good to be back, man. Uh, I missed you. I missed you, bro. Yeah, yeah dude. I, I, you know, I, I saw on Facebook you're having a blast, and uh, unfortunately I couldn't see any of the pictures you were posting, but it, see, it sounded awesome. Yeah, it was, it was definitely <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely cool. But no, it, it's weird. I think like that's since we've known each other. I think that's the longest we've gone without talking, like a couple weeks. So it's like yeah. at least with some kind of communication. So. But uh, yeah, it's it's it was it was cool. Um, before we get into that, I just we have to get it out of the way. Um, a sad, sad day um, for in my life and in a lot of people's lives. Um, Prince, the musical artist, um, passed away yesterday. Um, and those of you who know me, my favorite artist and one of my favorite artists of all time is Prince. Mm. So I was very, very upset yesterday. So I, I get back in the country and then I find out I find out that Prince dies and that's that's a rough one. I was like, Man I, I never knew he lived in Minneapolis. I was like, Wow, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, he's, was, he's from Minnesota. Yeah. Like, you know, I was up there for a few years with coaching for yeah. the Vikings, and you yeah. know, his house is right down the road in, Minne- in uh, on the lake, Minnetonka, and yeah, he's from that area. So, like, when I was in town up there, like, he, like Prince is like a huge cult following. Like, he would just do random shows and bars like, all cool. the time, and he'd be around the city. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. He's fifty-seven years old, the same age as my dad. Like, super, he's super young. young. Yeah, yeah, like. Man, I, I just couldn't believe it. And, and, and a couple of years back, like, and I've always wanted to see him in concert. And a couple of years back, I had a chance to go, um, but I ended up moving to China instead for a job. So I had to, you know, cancel those tickets and everything. So that bummed me out. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go to see it, see him. And so the last year, I've been trying to get there. But now it, it's just sad. I will never be able to see him in concert, man. Like, yeah. It's, just, uh-huh. oh, it, it, it's rough. So. Oh, get, that, that's that's sad. But uh, like I said, uh, unfortunately, life goes on for um, all of us. But you know, that's that's somebody who's going to be sorely missed in the music industry. So bummer. Yeah, and so. and sort of speaking of China, in a sense, China the wrestler dies too. Yeah, like what? I was like, what the what in the world's going on here? <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's crazy. Like these celebrities and people in the fast lane, they 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 live fast and they die young. It's just it's yeah. really crazy. She man. was only forty five. Oh yeah, I mean, but steroids put a huge. She, part I was gonna in that, say sure. she probably gonna say she probably had some some help, so to speak. Uh, right, you know, right. They're passing on. Yeah, I remember back in like the you know late nineties, ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, when China was like it. You know, it was, it was the Rock. It was China. It was like Triple H. Yeah. It was yep. you know the, the Undertaker when like when wrestling was like at its peak. You know, the early two thousands. Like China was it. And you know, she, but uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Um, it, it really is. Just it's nuts. And, and who knows uh, how you know the details of how Prince died are going to come out. They found him in his in his place, just kind of yeah. non responsive and. Who knows? It was you know, uh, drugs, suicide, like health issues. I guess a week ago he had to have an emergency landing like on his private jet because uh, he had like, mm. I guess flu symptoms, so he had to cancel a concert. Huh. Um, yeah, and so I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's it's crazy. You gotta appreciate every moment. So yeah, no, you're not. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So no, that's true. Um, yeah, well. There, that's a good way to start the podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm back well, in summer. Well, we're on episode 29. Eric Dickerson. 
Oh yeah, Eric Dickerson. Yeah. Here we Eric go. Dickerson. Call a call out to the you know L.A. Rams. So you know L.A. is going to be getting a team again. So perfect. you know, yeah. So that's a good perfect transition. Yeah, because uh, there's a decent buzz around here about L.A. And he, recently, did you hear they they traded they they got their their first round pick and everything now. So oh really? Yeah, there's a whole they traded for the pick and and everything. So it's going to be this the big thing now. So yeah, the Rams have the first pick of the draft this year. And kidding? And, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I know a few people in the Rams, so I'll, I'll definitely be kind of swinging by the new facilities and checking it out as as it comes through. But, but yeah, the LA LA's got a team, and it's 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 thoroughly needed. I mean, the market here is huge. Um, I think even more so than San Diego because, obviously, you know, like I, I play football at San Diego State, and, and yeah. you know the Chargers are down there. But the problem with playing football or any sports in San Diego is San Diego is such an amazing, beautiful city that nobody is from there. Right. 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 So when we would play games, you know, we shared the stadium with the Chargers, the Qualcomm Stadium. So yeah. I mean, we're a college team. We were not that great when I played, so we never really sold out. We got some big crowds, you know. But if we'd have forty-five thousand people at a game, fifty thousand people at a game, sometimes like half the stadium yeah, was gonna be the other team. Fills up half the stadium. <laughs> well, no, no, no. The, the stadium is sixty thousand, so it, it'd be full. But oh, I'm okay. saying half the stadium is the other team's fans because, oh. like, the other team's like, oh, cool, like. Um, BYU's in town. I went to BYU. I'm gonna go watch them play the Aztecs. Oh, right? I see. Yeah, or yeah. like, oh, yeah. they're pl- they're playing, you know, Wisconsin. Oh, I went to Wisconsin because you know they they transplanted to San Diego for jobs exactly. or whatever. So yeah. everybody was so all like of the the alumni from those other schools would always be at the stadium. They'd fill our stadiums up, and they would be <laughs> dedicated fans. And our fans would be like. I'm not going to go to a football game and I'm going to go to the beach. It's right across, you know? So it's like, exactly. I'm going to go see dolphins jump out of the water on the beach. Forget going in a stadium. Yeah. Like on Saturday, on a Saturday night, like there's like, dude, I can go to the beach or, you know, so it's like <laughs> Saturday evening. Yeah. So it, it's just a really tough thing, uh, a market out in San Diego, but in LA, it's a lot harder to do things. And the fans are much more, I, I think, supportive of teams here, of yeah. sports, much, much better sports town. Um, yeah. So I think the LA and, and people are hungry for an LA team. Again, so yeah, I think it's, a, it's good. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, the Raiders were there for a long time. And I know oh, yeah. they had quite a problem with the NFL for years. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but well, hopefully they'll straighten that out and keep the team there longer this time. Well, LA, I mean, the NFL has been wanting to get a team back in LA forever. The market is huge. I mean, this area, um, the market touches like eight million people in this area. Right. I mean, it's just yeah. that's just a huge market that you can just sell to. I mean, just the merchandise. It, they're gonna make millions and millions oh, yeah. and millions yeah. and millions. I mean, even yeah, even TV yeah, with- deals, marketing deals, advertising, just merchandise. It's just it's just you know traveling and people are gonna like you know it's just gonna cause you know commerce, new stadiums. It's just gonna. It's just going to make a lot of money for everybody, and so it, it's been a long time. And when I was with the Vikings, we almost moved to L.A. We almost became the L.A. Really? Vikings. Yeah. Um, yeah, our sta- yeah. Our stadium almost didn't get built. Like We had a brand-new stadium mm. because we had been the last year of our lease for like the Metrodome, and yeah. they didn't hadn't have a deal with the stadium, so they didn't get the deal done within like two months. It was two months away. Um, that we were moving to L.A. Like We had the paperwork signed and everything, but then like with – in like the it went to Congress of the of the state of Minneapolis or state of Minnesota and it got passed through two months before the deadline. Like Man. Just, yeah, and then they got that a stadium. That would have been weird. The L.A. Vikings. I yeah. know that's wrong. Dude, we had T-shirts and stuff already. No it kidding. Out, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. It was it almost happened. It was so close to happening. Like, yeah. So, um, but it, it's good to have a team. But yeah, Eric Dickerson back in the day, the L.A. Rams. I mean, that's. Ooh. And then he then he became a cult for a couple of years. Yeah, you know that's that's the that, typical Joe Montana or like the end of the the age of people that go to the team for a couple of years and kind of become a shadow. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean you know st- like I mean, even look at Peyton Manning. I thought he was going to be a cult, you know, lifer, but you know he went over to the Broncos. It's very few and far between now. I mean Tom Brady might be one of the last that start and end on one team. You yeah. know. Yeah, so, honestly, yeah, that that's not the name of the game in the league nowadays. So yeah, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, it's all about you know get your money where you can get it when you can get it because you know you don't know if you're gonna get hurt. You know. Oh, for so. sure. Yeah, it, you have to, and yeah, it, it's such a violent game. It's short, and who knows how long the NFL is gonna be around at this rate with all the new rules and stuff going on. And yeah, it, it's it's crazy. So yeah, um, Eric Dickerson was the first player to run for two thousand yards in a season, I believe. If yeah, I'm my yeah, memory, and he still has correct. the record. Um, actually, Adrian Peterson, I remember, was eight yards away from it 
that three years ago for uh, yeah and they yeah. didn't give him the ball i, I know what so the mad. heck they're i would have kept just handing him the rock i don't care you know even if you get a yard of play i would just kept stuffing the ball to him and be like you will get this record man yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> dude, it's so much harder to get the record nowadays than it was back then you know no oh, yeah. no yeah. nothing away from eric dickerson amazing football player i mean please I'm ridiculous yeah. i think it was like was it uh, 2,132 yards, I think he had, 2,100, something like that. No, it was uh, like 2,300 or something. Yeah, 20, no, or it, was, something. it was something like that. I'll, I'll have to fact check myself, yeah. Um, it's like 22, 23, I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous it, amount it, of yards. It, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I know Terrell Davis joined the 2,000-yard club like his fourth year in the league or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Like, he broke 2,000 yards in a season. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it, it's. Oh, I'm, I'm actually gonna check this um, rushing record. Just consult the Oracle. Uh, yeah, I know it's Eric Dixon. And then Payton, you know, Walter Payton held the. Uh, the, the yeah, the, yeah, it is. It's a record. It's, and yeah, then yeah. Emmett Smith broke that. It's 2,105. Ah, oh, okay. Because yeah. okay. I, I knew it was like something like because I know eight, eight, Adrian Peterson had 2,097 that year. Oh, yeah, because I knew that. Yeah, so 2,105 in 1984, and then Adrian Peterson 2012. Um, season had 2,097 yards. Like, yeah, he's five yards off it. Man. Yeah. yeah. Barry Sand. Uh, so it, I remember that season. Jamal Lewis had 2,000 yards too. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Terrell Davis in '98 had 2,008. Yeah. I mean, what would have happened if Barry Sanders actually had an offensive line any of the years that he played? At '97, Barry Sanders 2,053. He's number four on the list. Man, I remember watching reels on. Uh, it was like ESPN at the time because there was no NFL Network. But I remember watching reels of it was like some like Barry Sanders special or something. Like and all the jock straps on the ground that he left behind. <laughs> they they showed they showed like these clips of like it was like this montage of like him. He should have been like sacked in the backfield five six yard losses. Mm-hmm. It was all these clips of him. You know, dodging all these tackles just to get like a one or two yard gain. I was yep. like, that is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, like what would have happened if people actually could have blocked for him? Yep. Like every I- other running back would have been a terrible, terrible player on on the Lions. But he, you know, and and then he hung it up after eight seasons, nine seasons. Like it's just crazy. He just went out on top. He's like, I'm well, good. I, I, th- I think he wanted to get traded, and Detroit said, "There's no way." Right. Just, and and, and, and his, like, he just didn't have the desire to play. And he, his, he, yeah, his body yeah, he was hurting. He was just like, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm. He didn't go too long. You know, like. So that that's good. Like he he almost pulled the Peyton Manning train or the Brett Favre train. Yeah, you know, or, or yeah. actually, I think the worst example of that would be like Dan Marino. Like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, he played way too long. His that last uh, last season where he lost to I think the Jaguars. The, the, uh, the yeah, Bulls it was lost. really bad. Yeah, I think it was like sixty five to six. Yeah, think, that's oh, a true. Gross. <laughs> so, anyway. I saw it. And then one last thing about Barry Sanders, though, like his, uh, there was a, on the NFL Network. I forget what the name of the show is, but they did a, a special on him, and his dad totally does not like him. Like, no matter what kind of records he would break, he won the Heisman Trophy, all this. No matter what he ever did, his dad would always be like, "Gail Sayers is better," or you know, he'd always be saying like these other running backs are better than him. It's like, <laughs> man, how do you live with that? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's. His, Dad was so negative on him the whole time, you know. That's that is crazy. Um, huh? I did not know that, but hey, yeah. like yeah, maybe maybe, maybe that helped motivate Barry, you know? Yeah, possibly, oh, possibly. That motivate me, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I guess I gotta talk about it, dude. Um, my random two weeks to Indonesia before we get into all this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I randomly two weeks Indonesia, Bali, and Eastern Indonesia just went. <laughs> um. I can say it was crazy, awesome, good. Uh, so Bali, I think I mentioned to you before we talked about the show, is the craziest, most touristy place ever. Uh, I can, yeah. You can see the charm that it used to have back in the day. Um, it's, a, it's a Hindu island, so that's very unique um, in a way. Like I, I've never really been to a place with a Hindu village. I've been to Buddhist places, mm. you know, um, Catholic places, Muslim places, but like something with a Hindu culture was very, very interesting to me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so close to Australia, so so many Australians go there, and it's just a crazy, it's almost too touristy in the face, and it's kind of off-putting at some points, but it's a beautiful mm. place. Like, um, we went, went to, saw some volcanoes up there, and just nice. did some tours, and like, saw a lot of temples, it, it was gorgeous and beautiful, but the highlight of the trip, man, was, 
so Sean and I, we went there for a couple days, um, started in Bali, just kind of get the Bali feel, just do the whole thing. Then we flew over to uh, Flores Island, like one of the farthest, most eastern Indonesian islands, kind of over towards East Timor and everything. It's right next to it. And uh, we chartered a little private boat with some locals, like four, little four dudes, four kids, like basically 20 to 24 years old, like the team. There was a, our guide, um, the captain, um, the, the chef, a little chef kid, and um, the first mate who just did all the little other tasks so Ooh. the four of them this tiny little indonesian dudes like maybe like five, the tallest one was like five five and yeah. like and they're, they're young kids like the oldest one was our guy and he was 23 and okay. the, one, the captain was 23 as well and the, the first mate was 20 and the chef was 21 like just, yeah, and then they were just locals and the 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 three of the guides spoke english decently not not great but decent the other three didn't really speak english but they we chartered the boat and on this little rickety boat i mean this I mean, it was like old, rickety See, boat, but they had it set up so nice for us and a little cabin. But we just tooled around all these small, uninhabited islands over mm. the eastern Indonesia. And then we went to some tours, and, we, and then we stopped over on Komodo Island and Rinka Island where the Komodo dragons are. And that's we cool. went on, Yeah, we went on like hikes through the mountains and forests where like the Komodo dragons are and like with some guides that are there. They have some like ranger stations there that we – they uh, the whole tour, like we, we paid them for everything included all that so it's like oh, man. yeah so like we didn't have to pay for anything then they cooked like huge meals for us on the boat like snacks of like of local food like every night like we'd eat the like the first mate would just like take a fishing line and just cast it in the water catch fish squid <laughs> calamari like, right out of the water and like cook it at night for us um he had chicken he'd fry up i mean on you're on a boat all you can do is fry it's a lot of fried food but he'd like fry up vegetables like saute vegetables we had rice at every meal he made fried bananas and desserts and like Ooh, fresh sounds, yeah. yeah yeah it was great like, fresh fresh fruit like picked like everything just like it was it was amazing, and then like, I mean, we didn't shower for four days because we're on nice. a boat, you know, just like roughing it. <laughs> we went to like the only village on the island of Komodo with like a, it had like twelve or fourteen hundred people on it, and we walked through the village. They hadn't seen anything like us before. They were looking at us like we're really insane, you know. Like it was fun. Well, like we and, I looked like some kind of giant. Oh, you know? dude, I, I I did. Like and, I, and I'm wearing like a, a Superman tank top, you know. <laughs> like you know, I'm I'm two hundred, you know. Eight pounds is walking through, you know, six two walking through this village, <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. But yeah, we we bought local food there. It was it was it was awesome. Like we were, and then like we'd go to these uninhabited places. So, I mean, like, seriously, they were cooking like uh, the meals. We had like five six dishes every meal. This huge spread, and then do, and uh, it was nuts, dude. Do they cook? Is like uh, spicy stuff part of their culture? They, oh yeah, like, totally. Yeah, so kind of like Indian. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. it, it was totally some spice. So, like a typical meal, we'd always have rice, like a big old yeah. thing of nice, like you know, steamed rice. They're like a huge tons, as, as much as you could eat, like too much. You know, so they have a big old pot of rice right there. Then they put like usually two vegetable dishes, like one kind of like a kind of like a uh, in a kind of a vegetable broth with like you know cabbage, carrots, green mm. beans, all in there. One kind of a, a sauté like with spicy sauce, vegetables with like some mm-hmm. peppers and onions and everything that go with like a fish. Like they put over a fish, you know, sauté with the fish or a, or a chicken. And okay. then they'd have like um, another fried like tempeh or a tempura or like a egg, oh, yeah, or yeah. an eggplant or another dish on the side like as well as that or yeah. So they have like four or five dishes and then they have like um, like again a, another meat. So it would be like. Five, six, but and then I have like desserts, like fresh, like watermelon that they pick from like an island, or like you know bananas that we brought on the boat that they picked, or like dragon fruit or something, and they'd be that there too. And then they'd make us like fried bananas with like chocolate sauce on them, like uh, you know, for like dessert or like for snack uh, during the day. Yeah, so like it was tons, and they do that three times a day, like three huge meals a day, like there's spread. Like breakfast would be like fresh my banana pancakes and like what's it or like egg and sandwich with fresh tomatoes and like all this stuff and then like lunch is huge dinner is huge and then um so like there's so much where you're full all the time but the thing is <laughs> we would go like we would wake up in the morning like at five or six and uh we, we would go out like we we would uh kind of anchor off the, on like an abandoned or not abandoned, an uninhabited island just kind of anchor yeah. off the, and we'd sleep on the boat because that's where our thing was and that's in the cool. morning we'd like go into shore they you know put the boat up to the shore and we'd hop off and we'd go hike to the top of like the mountain and watch the sunrise 
like this huge of like first thing in the morning, like just sweating, yeah. like, it was hot and hard, like a big long hike, and we go back down, and they come back breakfast to be served on the way down there, yeah. and then we go to another island, then we go like snorkeling for like four hours, three hours, and then we go to another island, and there'd be like Komodo Park, and we do like a two two hour hike out in the wilderness, Komodo. So like we were hoofing it, so you're burning every calorie you take in. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did you did you see any sharks when you're snorkeling? No, 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 no sharks. Yeah. But yeah. actually, we did see a shark relative. We were out, and we went to this place in between a bunch of islands that opened like this high fast current part um and we saw manta rays like 10 oh, 12 oh. foot wide manta rays yeah, that was kind of nervous yeah that yeah. was a little nerve-wracking because yeah. one the, the current was so strong so it kind of sweep you away so you had to hold under a rope when you jumped off the boat um but uh <laughs> yeah. yeah but you'd look down like and the water's pretty deep so it's like you know 20 30 feet deep water but the, yeah. right there at the bottom there'd be like this big ass like 12 10 foot wide manta ray just like floating there just kind of chilling and you're like whoa <laughs> man that yeah. is insane yeah and then and then obviously hiking the wilderness komodo dragons the only place on yeah. earth to see them just that, you know that, eight that, foot how six close foot. Would you, how close would you get like touched them no way yep there's a sleeping man. one that on the sleeping perch he's like oh he's an old one he just always is there so we went up there he was sleeping i grabbed his tail he's like hey, touch the tail and i was like oh my god and we were we were hiking through the jungle this one time, and like this young one wasn't well, young. They they live to seventy years old. It's like a, oh, 20, wow. a twenty year old female, or so. And uh, we were just walking the path, and like we heard this shh, just through the bushes, and like sure enough, we like stop, and like this, and she's probably like five feet long, um, yeah. young, like really like good looking komodo dragon, like you know very healthy. She kind of starts, she's climbing up the hill, and you know they're cold blooded, so it takes them a lot of energy to do stuff. So she's yeah. like taking breaths, you know, like taking rest. Like, we'll climb yeah, up this hill. Yeah. Yeah, because I was going to say, if, if I was correct, the Komodo dragon is the, that's the one where it's like they're really slow, but if they just nick you yep. and they follow you for miles, yep, no yep, yep. the Because their saliva is toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. With all the bacteria. Yeah. So yeah, she was climbing up this, this hill, and then like right in front of like we were, because we're on a path, and like it's kind of a little slopey on the right side. And sure enough, she just crossed our path and literally came between three feet of us. And we just sat down, crouched down. She was just staring and just chilling. She was breathing really hard. She was like, because <sighs> she climbed a hill, you know. But she was just sitting wow. there, like looking at us and just not even just chilling. I was like, oh, there, there's a five foot Komodo dragon looking at me right now, just hanging out. It was, Shh, it was awesome. And then, like, insane. you know, but the, we went to. Uh, the ranger station where there's kind of semi-domestic ones where they just kind of hang out and get fed, you know. <laughs> That's the, funny. <laughs> well, the, the, there's a lot less of them um, in the touristy and like the habited part of the islands yeah. now because they know people around, so they will stay away. So they go over to the jungle side where it's more wild, oh, okay. and you yeah. can't really get over there. Um, yeah. So that's where they hang out. But over the last like 20 years, too many people have been coming to the islands, you know. So, but, but we did see wild ones, and and that was cool. And and the ones around the ranger station were like huge. They were like six, seven feet, just big, big Man. old. You what do they what do they feed them? Oh, just big straps of meat, chicken, and Man, just no chunks. Kidding. Yeah, and they just eat it. So, but yeah, they were just laying around. Those are those are all around. There's again like this big seven and a half foot male just laying there, probably like a good three hundred pounds, you know, four hundred pounds just laying there. You're like, um, yep. <laughs> but uh, the the ones in the wild were really cool. Um, but yeah, dude, and then uh, we got back after that tour, after not showering, and then we went to, and they were like, you know, after roughing it for seven days, you know, a couple of days in Bali, just kind of touring, like, the uh, the outskirts of, like, the, the, the away from the touristy stuff, and then the island hopping, we're like, you know what, let's stay in a luxury resort. So we went to a luxury <laughs> resort, and then, like, the nicest resort I've ever been to in my entire life. It no. was the most amazing place i've ever been it was so nice that i became a club member and i'd say at other places around the world they have it was so nice bro and yeah. and we did that and then it was beautiful and so they had like their own everything they had their own ice cream shop in inside the resort and you know oh, i went there a mile away <laughs> even better it was my it was gelato which is my favorite oh, over oh, ice cream man. so it was great dude it, it was it was a fun, good experience it took forever to get there, 29 hours to get there, you know, 20, 21 or so to get back. So, and just got back like yesterday at night, right? Basically, like, you know, so it's just, uh, yeah, we're back in and, you know, we're, we're recording and we're, we're doing yeah, an episode. So, here we are. Yeah, so, here we are. But, yeah, Ted's that's. barely slept and we're going to see what crazy things we can get him to say. I know, right? Yeah, that's another thing, is, dude, the jet lag. <laughs> it's 15 hours ahead of LA time the next day. So, it's all weird. Yeah, yeah like, so, you, so you travel back into yesterday, and then when you come home, you travel into tomorrow. You know, you stay you stay into today. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, you stay into today. It's weird, dude. It's, But, yeah, like, right now, hold on, let me see. It is 
what time is it right now over there? It is. Hold on, I'm going to pull up to see like, you know what time. So I, so you know how weird I'm feeling. It's datetime.com or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I have, yeah. So it's it's uh about four in the morning, five five forty five in the morning right now. Okay. For, yeah. So it, the uh, five to four tomorrow. So like over this this morning, I've been right. staying up till it's it's all weird, but but yeah, we're here. So yeah, man. So what's been going on with you since I've been gone, dude? I'm nothing anywhere near as as exciting as that. But I was telling you before the podcast, I was I'm getting ready. I think to throw my hat back into the the gaming. Oh thing yes, more more seriously. So yeah, we're we're gonna flesh that out soon. Yeah, so everyone listening, stay tuned to some awesome stuff we're gonna bring because Johnny Boy is back in the mix and he's going to. I mean, you've heard about his Game Day '98 exploits back in the day, but we're oh, gonna yeah. have some new age 2016 exploits. Yeah, exactly. Coming soon. Yeah. So um, yeah, with. Uh, on the likes of Terry, remember uh, episode fifteen, etc. Yep. Right? Yep. And so exactly. It's gonna be really cool. So I'm, I'm excited to see what we what we got going. I think you you got your game pad. You got a few games loaded up, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's been gonna be pretty cool. I think I'm gonna have to get on uh, those games as well. And we'll we'll play each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so sweet. Yeah. Um, what what games did you get again? Uh, I got Mortal Kombat X, Street Fighter Five, and I got. Uh, Madden 08 because I'm using the PC right now. I don't have an Xbox One or you know PS4, so I'm just using what I have. My, well, I'm using my son's PC, but so I, I had to get Madden 08 because they don't make any newer Maddens. So yeah, for the PC, that's right. Yeah, so, dude, it's gonna be cool though. Like yeah, because both um, MKX and Street Fighter 5 are like you know Street Fighter 5 just came out, so it, it, it'll, yeah. it'll be fun. Like it'll be awesome because I mean you were pretty good at those games back in the day, oh, yeah. so it'll be fun to watch you like get better and, and pick it up and. And I'm I'm fun to like help that process and like play with you. So it'll it'll be really cool. All this cool yeah, stuff we do absolutely. with it. We'll do check in. So that'll be a segment coming up on the podcast. Plus its own extra probably YouTube shows and stuff we'll do as well. So oh, yeah. yeah, that that's gonna be cool. So stay tuned for, for John kicking butt in that <laughs> um, <laughs> in that sense. Um so I mean shoot, we talked for a good twenty minutes and stuff. How about we get into some video game news and stuff, huh? Uh, yeah, well, let's do it. This is a gaming podcast, right? Ah, something like that. <laughs> it, it's whatever we want podcast. I mean, people listen just to listen to video games, but sometimes our weird shenanigans are fun too, I guess. I hope. <laughs> um I think I'm gonna go backwards on the um The Order. On, yeah, because those last two are like the big shot stuff okay. i think that's like the big news stuff um so sure. yeah, let's, let's do these quick haters real quick um so yeah the news everybody um a few news stories this week um like i said i had to just jump back into it you know being out of the loop for a while but i i did see some cool stuff here coming up um rocket league we'll start with that um we, we you know we talk about rocket league a lot but yeah and we, we mentioned this before but finally the basketball for rocket league is coming next week yeah wow, i didn't mess around with that nope and it's free well, no kid. Okay, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a um, it's a free downloadable update. Um, and it comes awesome. with an NBA flag pack, so you get all a flag because you know on the back of your little RC car. Oh yeah, out, yeah, yeah. On, on your antenna. Yeah, yeah wow. and, and it gets they work that out. Yeah, it's a deal. You get all thirty teams, and you you can purchase that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like tw- it's like I think it's like five bucks. You get all thirty packs for all thirty teams, and you get one automatically just for signing up. Tell them your favorite team. So, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so Psionics, uh, you know, the developers, they described the hoops mode as a dynamic basketball twist on the Rocket League's original formula. So I wonder if I could play play that. I was wondering if I could. Is it a sort of a semi-controlled environment that you're in? Is it? it, it I, I think it would be very difficult. It is absolutely insane because I can barely play it. <laughs> no, like, I'm I'm decent. Um, um, Veloc from episode three rocks. Yeah. He is so good. So him and I will play online together. Dude, that fool is good. So yeah. we'll play two v two and like he holds it down. And as long as I I just pass to him and and he he just he'll fly his car through the air and knock it in. He's he's really really good. Um, I think I might actually be better at the hoops. Um, you know, I'm I'm a basketball player at heart yeah, and I played basketball I in high school and varsity and all this everything but uh yeah it's it, it would be very it's, difficult <laughs> would you compare it more to like if you're playing a hockey game because like you know when it's yeah. it's constantly moving exactly exactly yeah. the ball is okay. and it's moving in three dimensions 
Okay, so yeah. So it's I'm, not on the I'm, ground. So the ball is never on the ground. So uh, if, if a hockey game, you can almost kind of track it. Okay, the puck's here, there, because it's, it's only in two dimensions, right? Yeah, that's right. Like basketball, like if I'm passing it around, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. The, the ball is, because uh, it's uh, in a three dimensional arena where the ball is yeah. bouncing and hitting the ceiling, your dri- car driving up on the wall and flying off it to hit it yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so it would be really hard. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. As soon as, the, as soon as the third dimension gets added, it's like, eh, man. Yeah. But, uh, but that's cool. I'm, I'm excited to check it out. I think it releases on the on the 28th, so mm, that's that'll very be fun. Good. Yeah, so it's go really rock cool with it. You did it as a free like download. Yeah, I mean, man. Most, nice. most other places have been like, oh, ten bucks, five bucks, but they're just like, yeah, here, take it. Dude, they made so much money on Rocket League that they're okay. Yeah. You know, and then they get money from all the skins and stuff. Yeah, I think that's really cool. They did it though. Like yeah. I mean, like I said, and anyone else would have tried to nickel and dime. Yeah. you know their users or whatever so yeah i think Sionix is positioning himself to be a very very good developer moving forward because yeah. this game was super successful for them and it's a very good model and so moving forward they now have you know they made millions and millions of dollars the game only costs a couple you know like a hundred thousand to make so they, they have so much profit so much money and they can build their studio out they have a good like model the way they're doing it and it's it's just it's good so um yeah i'm, I'm happy to see See what what they do next, but yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna play this. So Veloc and I will check back and see, you know, how how it works, and because I'm sure Veloc will be on it tough, because he he's on it every night, so <laughs> it'll be fun to check <laughs> it out. Um, so yeah, that's um, going along with um, developers and platforms and etc. Um, Xbox 360, Microsoft hmm. announced that uh, ten and a half years, they're finally saying goodbye. No more yep. production of the Xbox 360. They have ceased production. As of now, wah, wah, wah. yeah, it's it's all gone. I mean, hey, ten and a half years later, um, they're taking a big hit on the Xbox One. They're not doing great on it. They have some cool things going in the future with the uh, integration with the PC and the Windows 10 Store, etc. But uh, yeah, it's um, I I don't know why these numbers came up. This I guess are the latest numbers. But as of 2013, you know, that, you know, they were tracking consistently. Uh, it sold 78 million units, so not too shabby. <laughs> At all. Yeah, was that total or for that year? No, that's total. That's total. Okay, that's, 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 total. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the the most the greatest selling console of all time is the Wii, and that's at uh, no, excuse me, that as the PlayStation Two, that was at a hundred and sixty million units. Wow. But the second was the Wii at eighty two million, eighty three million. Yeah. So seventy eight is is number three on, on of all time. That's pretty good. So yeah. That's the third best selling console of all time of every console that's ever came out, which is you know, there's been, you know, thirty or so. That's pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing all right. Yeah. Um, so um yeah, uh but yeah, they're gonna continue selling the current stock and avail- it's available, you know, depends on the country you're in, you know, if we have a stock, but uh and the Xbox Live store and the 360 stores will still remain active, but just, you know, they won't produce anymore. So, there you oh, go. Yeah. Moving on, you know, moving along. So. It's getting, it's certainly not going to be any NES. I mean, you know. Oh, right? I mean, yeah, we, we talk, wasn't that, yeah, that was a boss battle question back in the day, right? Exactly. I, yeah, I was blown away by that. what, 23 years of production? Like, 2008 was a lot? What? Yeah, something insane like that. Was yeah, like, like, yeah, because, you know, obviously it came out in 83 over in Japan, but 85 was, like, you know, the U.S. release. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Totally Ab- ridiculous. <laughs> absolutely crazy. But you know that, that is Nintendo for you. But yeah, so uh, ten and a half years, and that's a good console say, cycle to say goodbye. But you know, um, it, it, it's expected. So um, they still have all the backwards compatibility on the Xbox One. So there's no point. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, why bother? You yeah. Know, there's no point putting money into that. Yeah. Um, so that that's a little quick hitter. Um, the last little quick one, which is kind of cool, I think, before we get into the. A big topic where we got to dive deep and really figure it out because it affects you and me as well. <laughs> um, but uh, is uh, emulation is a thing? Um, it's can be illegal. It can be good from a game's preservation standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I utilize emulation a lot. I have a lot of emulators. I mean, call myself out. I, I like emulation. It's good, and I do it for the right reasons, the right ways. Most of the games I have on emulations I've owned before. I do own in storage, so. You know, it's the license you're getting, but right. um, Sega. I mean, they've kind of dropped the ball recently in the last, you know, five six years when it comes to games and, and systems and et, et cetera. But they have uh, announced they have uh, partnered with Steam and they have an official Sega Mega Drive emulator that's coming out on Steam. So Ooh, that's yeah. an interesting move. April 28th. Um, it's called uh, the Sega Mega Drive Classics Hub. So hmm. yeah. So- it, 
then you'll buy the the ROM, like the games through that then. Uh huh. So what what happens is on Steam you can already play a lot of these titles. So if you go on Steam and you say you buy Golden Axe Two, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You can uh, you can then get access to this hub. And the cool thing about the hub is I I can already see where they're going with it. They probably want to integrate with some virtual reality. Um, and it, the hub it puts you into a 3D environment of a Sega fan's bedroom in the early 90s. <laughs> so uh, you walk around the, the hub, like the, this bedroom, and you walk up to the CRT TV and sit down, and like um, all the games in your quote library that you've purchased that for the go for this system um, are up on the shelf, a virtual shelf, and you reach up, you click them, and they, and then you click on the master drive, and you boot up the master drive, and the TV this and the virtual. This sounds familiar. I feel, I feel like we've read this story recently. Yeah, it, it might be um, <laughs> like a little bit of Ready Player One action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Um, but um, yeah, actually, a little bit later, we have some more Ready Player One callbacks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. I think they're really making it for the virtual reality. That's that's a perfect way to. Segue into that. I mean, what do you think? Uh, would you be on on board for the Sega stuff? Oh, no, I think it's brilliant. I mean, you know, they they, they dropped doing the, you know, the hardware stuff years ago, and they said they're going to be a kind of a strictly, you know, software company. And you know, retro gaming is coming back with a vengeance right now. Oh, I'm so, on it tough, man. <laughs> it's time they can totally kind of double dip on this stuff, you know, for sure. So, and, and not only double dip on you know you and I who bought these games 20, 30 years ago. But you know, like my son, he's thirteen. He, he'd probably end up buying a bunch of these games too. Yeah, so. and you want to expose him to that, and that's an easy way because yeah. it's Steam. Everyone has Steam. Exactly. So I think I think it's a genius. So, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see other people following in that path. Yeah, actually, um, let me see if I can pull this up. Um, the Ooh. list of games actually that they're currently on the Steam marketplace. Let's see. They're actually pretty good. Um, what kind of games would you like to see on on this? <laughs> like, what are the good games? Oh, for uh, Genesis. Yeah. Whew, uh, obviously, like the Golden Axes, um, Altered Beast. Um, man, I can't. I'm having a total mind blank on Genesis games right now. Yeah, there's there's some there's some good ones that you definitely want to see on there. You know, like. I mean everything. Let's. I mean all the Sonics, of course, and right. And, yeah. Let's. Okay. Here, here's a list of a few. I'm just gonna read a few. So obviously the first two: Golden Axe, Altered Beast. Boom, boom. Yep, okay. There done. you go. <laughs> um, I'll read. I'll skip a few of them, but Echo the Dolphin. Got to do oh, that one. Yep, yep. Shinobi. Yep. Oh yeah. Definitely. Crackdown. Yep. Yep. Um, Shadow Dancer. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Space Harrier Two. I love that one. Uh, oh yeah, that was a great Echo game. Echo Junior, I actually like that as well. I had that. You ever played that? I uh, yeah, it's you're a you're a killer whale in that one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's it's more kiddie, but it's a different kind of, It's better gameplay. It's kind of interesting. Um, the graphics oh. aren't as cool, but uh, um, Galaxy Force Two, yep. Um, mm. Fatal Labyrinth, that was a good one. Uh, Virtual Fighter Two. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. There's just so many. There's about. Fifty here. Fantasy Star Two, Fantasy Four, uh, Star Three, Fantasy Four, Star Four, Streets of Rage Three, um, Shining Force, Streets of Rage One, Gunstar Heroes, um, Streets of Rage Two. Obviously, so basically all the good stuff. Golden Axe Two. Um, how many? Yeah. How many games roughly do they have? About fifty. Looks like okay, right that's, now. That's pretty good. Yeah. 50 or so um some good ones too like that's just rough right off the cuff these are all like right in yeah. there um and then there'll be more um and it's it's the thing is you can buy those from steam so if you already own so the thing is if you own those games on steam the list of these 50 games here you get automatic access to this hub oh that's like, cool yeah and so and then you can um i'm sure there'll be more coming you know all the games oh, yeah. the library i'm sure i'm sure once they you know the so sega can show these other companies that you know the other companies that made games for the Genesis. Look, these things are selling. Mm-hmm. They'll easily get everyone else to just fall in line. Well, the thing is too about Sega is that a lot of those games were developed in house, first party. You know, like yeah. a lot yeah. of them were. Um, so Sega has a huge library with their first party stuff as well. So um, it'll be good to see. But but yeah, cool. Um, yeah, right on. So you can emulate legally. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so very cool. And are you ready for the big stuff? The, oh yeah. The, the big in depth. Should we just should we take a breath or just tackle it? <laughs> okay. Um, 
it's these two stories kind of coincide with each other. Um, we've talked at length about Xbox 1.5, PlayStation 4.5, yeah? Yeah. Well, some inside reports have stated and have found that the the PlayStation version 4.5 is a real thing. Yep. It's called the Neo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's code name for the, the Neo. Um, uh, huh. There, uh, how do we want to attack this? We want to go over specs and what it's done first. We want to type what we our opinions. Well, how do how do you want to do this? Well, I think after looking at the specs, I think it's the way they did it. It's the best the best move. Like, mm-hmm. yes, it's better, but it's not like so significantly better where you're just like, oh man, I just bought this one you know four months ago and this one came out. Like it's it's seriously not that much better. But if you don't have a PS4 and you can wait, then it, you know it's 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 worth waiting for if you want to, but it's also at the same time if you don't want to wait, you're really not missing a ton. Right. Yeah. Let's, so, yeah. Let, let, let's get into some specs and some other things about the way that we're releasing it that kind of makes it even more. It, it's kind of weird. It, you can go either way. Okay. So, um, it's code in the Neo. Uh, it's a three ninety nine retail price estimation. You know, like these, these are again rumors. And there's a lot of inside reports, and so a lot of this information is like confirmed, but some of it, you know, so a little bit of rumor is. So waiting until they announce probably at E3, right? Yeah. Um, so what is heard is starting in October, games that come out from October on are required. So developers are required to create a base mode and a Neo mode within the game. Mm-hmm. So this goes because Sony does not want to split their user base. They have an install base of 35 million approximately right now. So if mm. you alienate those customers who have current PS4s, that's stupid, right? right so right. they have. So I was reading some of these things. There's a big, huge, long list of requirements and stipulations on all developers now, which you can and can't do. Like, you can't offer exclusive content for like the Neo version. You can't. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it you. Uh, they're not, it's not meant to supplant the PS4. So it's meant to go in 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 you know kind of existence with it coexistence so if you are a game coming out in september this year you have to have a day one patch right um yeah. and there's just different versions like you can't you can't um sacrifice um frame rate for graphic fidelity so obviously the graphic processor is better right so you can't be like oh it looks better but it only runs at 30 frames instead of 60 frames so if the native game runs at 60 and you're making like a patch you can't patch it to lower right Right. So they want to keep that up. And so there's a lot of different ways that they're doing to protect the consumer who already have the PS4 regular versions. Yeah. Um, and the specs are decent. You get you get extra 512 megabytes of, uh, of memory, which is – that's a good to work with. I mean uh, – Yeah, but I mean it already has 8 gigs, so, you know – if five five twelve on top of eight, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that difference. Well, I mean that that's with you know that's with some some processes freed up and, and they've done a couple things. I mean they sell the same eight cores and everything, but yeah. uh, the graphic I guess the graphics processor is supposed to be much much better. Um, it's uh, the, the AMD. Specs, yeah, from the specs I saw, it was, I mean again it was it's slightly better. You know the 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 biggest the jump I saw in the specs was the. The processor it's, itself, it, you know, it's still the eight-core processor, but it ran at the the, P, the current PS4 runs at one one point six gigahertz. Yeah, and the the newer processor is going to run at two point one. But I think, which that's you know a decent jump. I think though the reason for that jump in the processor is to handle the four K. Yes, uh, pushing the four K. So again, it's. Yeah, it's there, but when you're pushing the 4K, you're not going to see a giant... Uh, you know, this is why I'm saying, like, if you can wait, then wait and get it. If you can't wait, then just go ahead and get one, because you're really, I mean, you're you're splitting hairs when you yes. talk the difference, really. You know, so, you know, that, that's why I think why it'll be able to handle a lot of games better. Like, w- one of the be- best things they can do is, like, okay, Uncharted comes out in May, right? This might be a way for them to be, like... Like, cause Uncharted is like the big thing, but like, hey, here's Uncharted. Boom, here's Uncharted on Neo. Wow, cause it's already okay. gonna look great, right? So yeah. think of like, if you're a developer, right? Think of what you could do with this extra specs as you as a developer. I mean, yes, right. for the average person, it's not, but you can do so much more with a game with just even these little bit of extra specs. Oh know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, from it, a developer it, side point, it sounds it's great. Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. But for the consumer, it's the, they're they're not going to see it unless the developer takes advantage of it. Right. So that that's why I think it was a, a pretty good. I mean, if it plays out the way that it looks like it is. Yeah, I think they did this in a pretty good way. Right, especially especially with the regulations they're putting on us to not split the user base. So like, um, they can't, you know, if, if there's a, some good quality control stuff. So it's like, people are like, hey, but what if there's bugs like on the Neo version on on the patch? Well, you know, can you still release the regular version? The Sony's like, nope, you must fix both patches. Yeah. You know, well, excuse me, both versions. So yeah. if there's bugs on the Neo version, you cannot release just the original. The the, the called they call it the base mode. Yeah, so which is great. I mean, so they're doing a really good job of keeping it very stringent on, and the developers, I mean, not the developers would do this kind of stuff, but just making sure that the users don't get a bad experience. So if you have that PS4 right now, like, like me, like I just got one recently, you know, like probably like six months ago, five months ago during Christmas time, right? Like yeah. uh, Black Friday. Yeah. Um, that you, you, you don't feel totally like I, I i would like this i mean shoot like i'd like an upgraded one that'd be cool i mean why not have the best one right i mean it, it you want the best of everything especially with you know if you're playing video games you want the best one um yeah. but i don't feel totally like messed up on it i'm like i'm not like oh man what the heck well that's why i think it's a brilliant with the way they did it like, because, like I said, you're, you know, I think if, if you're on this, you know, the the original PS4, and they come out with the PS4 5.0 or whatever, that's where you might be more compelled to be like, yes, I, I think I need to get a new one now, which, you know. Which is good. Like, who, who knows how long this goes? So, like, I think right off the gate, right out of the gate, we will see some graphical fidelity upgrades and some good stuff. It'll be, it'll be like a little cleaner and some cool things. But I think maybe a year or two down the line later, after this comes out, then yeah. it's going to be that. Then there's going to be a large delineation. Like games are going to be made for this. Like developers are going to go. Right. To, then you're going to be like, oh wow, I de- it's a better version, totally. Yeah. Because, yeah. Exactly. Because exactly. really, like the specs are small, but like I think the CPU is upgraded, the GPU is upgraded, and the memory. So when you combine all three of those, they they stack. Yeah. You know, and then um, there's some internal workings. I'm sure they're cleaning up and the, the the way they're you know the whole system's put together, it's streamlined. You know, so they're they're doing a lot of things within the hardware that can probably be better. But we won't really feel the effects for probably a couple of years, right? And then it's probably like okay, time for PS5, right? And then you're like, exactly. all right. But yeah. here's the second part of that story. Um, Shuhei Yoshida, obviously, you know, with big name in, in Sony and PlayStation, uh, was interviewed. So we're gonna kind of talk about both these at the same time. Mm. And one of the guys is like, hey, what is the PS5 going to look like when it comes out? And then Shuhei's like, you mean if. So it's like, huh. And he says, we need to be more agile between console releases. So as you you know, is a typical console lifecycle, when we were talking about uh, this before, it's like has been five to seven years normally, right? That's yeah. you, you get a console for that long. I mean, I had my PS3 forever and played it. You know, I got it in 06 and played like brand new Skyrim and Uncharted like in 20, you know, 12 and 2011, right? Yeah. Um, but Sony and Microsoft are trying to shorten this console life cycle, obviously five to seven years to a little shorter time frame, and yeah. that's what the this um, new PS Neo is supposed to be a PlayStation Neo, whatever it's supposed to do. But he said if, and it's like, huh? You can open that up to interpretation any way you want, but it's like. We've talked at length too about what's the future of the video game market. Like, yeah. what what are we? Are there going to be consoles? Is it going to be only virtual reality? Like, are consoles dead? And so it's, it was a very interesting way to do it. And especially if they're doing this little half step, kind of on the PlayStation, do they really want to do another big PlayStation Five? Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm, that's what I that's what I'm leaning towards. I think they just kind of keep doing these little iterations, uh-huh. and that you know, so they they could just keep calling it the PS4 now forever. They could say, oh, it's PS4 version 10.0. Right. It's PS4 version 11.5, you know? So they can just keep doing that instead. instead or just of- keep naming them like PlayStation Neo, PlayStation Plus 6, PlayStation right. whatever. PlayStation, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. PlayStation exactly. Vision, PlayStation, you know, like this weird names, you know, like, you know, yeah. like X, PlayStation, you know, like Essence, X. just weird words. <laughs> yeah, with these, like, like I said, with these half steps, they, they definitely are more agile doing that. And then they're continuously making the platform better and the developers can kind of take advantage of newer stuff more frequently than like you said what this one console comes out boom now now you know at first the developers are like oh man there's so much here to work with mm-hmm. but then after three years they're like 
shoot, I'm constrained by this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do I work with this now? Right. You know, so by doing those half steps, it keeps it keeps everything moving. Right. I I don't like that idea for consoles to half steps all the time. Um, I think yeah. it's it's not good for the market necessarily. But I do like this sense of way they're doing. It. If they if they are going to do this, you're right. They do this in the best way possible. Um, but it opens up the door. It's like here, here's the other side of the, of the coin. It they're what they're pushing for. The main point of this PlayStation Neo is the 4K output, right? Yeah. Nobody is using 4K right now. No, not nothing. Really. Nobody. They have 4K TVs, but they upscale. 4K video is so rare, you know. Um, so it's well, like they yeah. don't want they don't want to split the user base between the the base PlayStation and the Neo. So right now Sony has the UHD players just came out, the Ultra HD that they do 4K. Yeah. Where so very few Blu-rays are actually 4K now. You have to have the 4K Blu-ray player, the, the UHD Ultra HD. You have to have the 4K yep. TV, and you have to have a a piece of content that was shot on 4K cameras to be right. able to write the whole kit and caboodle to get the true 4K, right? Right. Well, imagine if this thing shipped with a 4K Blu-ray player in it, the UH Blu-ray here, but they couldn't do that because Sony's like, no, we won't, don't want any delineation. Why? Because then that would exclude people in the PS4 originals. So this yeah. can't have a UHD player in it. So then what's the point of having 4K output? Like, there's no, They're going to be screaming from the, from the rooftops, like, oh, 4K, 4K, but it's just going to be 4K upscaling, and none of the games are going to take advantage of that because there's no one has 4K TVs yet. I mean, they're getting cheaper. They really are, but it's just going to be upscaling. So it's yeah. like, what? what's the That's point? That's just playing for the future, I guess, and they technically can brag it's 4K. That's what I'm saying, but, but, but like <laughs> I said, so it's the other kind of side of the coin. We're like, oh, this is a good half step. It might be good to grab a fidelity. It's good, it's good, it's good. But then it's like, oh, it's bad. It's not that good because it's like, what's the point? Like, 4K, and that's what there's no 4K. Well, the, well, the games though that is if they, I'm assuming some developers might have gotten you know the heads up before. You know, oh before sure, yeah, the dev kids are probably getting so, sent out here now. So they could they could totally be ready for it. So when it does, you know, when that does come out, and someone does have 4K TV. Some of these games could totally be in 4K. Yeah, but if you remember on the PS3, right? They're like, oh, 1080p resolution. Most games were at 720p. There were some yeah. 1080p games, but most games were at 720. They're well, that's like, that's more on the developer. If you know, like, like I, I'm assuming, like you know, even with this Neo mode, most developers, I mean, some will probably you know take advantage of every bit they can. But I would say most developers, there's probably going to be, you know, to make it easier to explain, there's probably almost going to be a button to, like, neo-fi your game. Right. And, but 4K is not going to be that button. You have to build that ground up straight yeah, up. And, right. But if, if you want to just make sure it runs on Neo, you'll kind of push a button. It'll convert it to make sure it runs like it should. Mm -hmm. You'll have to test it, make sure there's no bugs. But most developers are probably going to do that. Ooh. And then that's where, like you said, it's just going to upscale to 4K. Yeah. But there's you know, not going to be native 4K support. It's just not going to be there early on, or, or if at all. So, unless someone plans on doing it when they develop the game from ground up. Which, you know how hard that'll be right now? Like, ugh. And, like, especially, and, and you're building it for such a localized market, because then it's going to have to downscale, because most people aren't going to be able to output with 4K. If you don't have output, or, or excuse me, you don't have a 4K TV, it's going to have to, to low, make it 1080p. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point? You know, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's interesting. I think... It helps out with the uh, the VR. Um, oh, totally. So absolutely. Maybe, that, that, maybe I mean, that's, that's what they're banking that's on. That's gonna make the VR look insane. That actually, I'm, I didn't even think of that. That actually might even be the reason why they're doing it. That's exactly. Well, also, I think what they're doing it too is for the the because I bet you Sony's got a w bunch of warehouses of. Blu-ray players and 4K TVs that they're like, hey, exactly. you know, the, and so now they're with their PlayStation, they're unifying everything. Seriously, yeah. they're unifying everything. So now they're pushing all that, so then they can be like, oh, get your 4K experience, you get a Blu-ray player, you get a you get your 4K P, your PS4 and your 4K TV all in for exactly. a bundle, blah blah blah. You know, so Sony's making moves, they're doing stuff interestingly, but this is, uh, we'll see. Man, awesome. speaking of Sony VR, real quick, PAX yeah. East is going on yeah, over PAX here. Yeah, PAX East, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. I totally wish I, 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 I totally dropped the ball and forgot about it, and I realized it was this weekend. Started today, like, yeah. On, yeah, on Monday, and I was like, shoot. So I tried to see if like you know there's no tickets available. And I was like, oh, maybe I can with a media pass, but they they were just shut down. Like, don't even bother asking for media passes. You know, hit us up next year. I was like, oh man. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I'm not there this year. Yeah, like PAX. Yeah, but that that's been what's going on now. Buying. 
that Sony was going to have a huge VR uh, set up there uh-huh. with, their, with their PlayStation stuff. Well, I know they're going to be at E3 for sure, and I, I'm already logged in for E3 to, to go for the whole day. I have all, I have my, my pass, so yeah. um, th- that I'll definitely have to report on that. But, yeah, they're, they're doing a lot of stuff at PAX this year. I heard PAX is going to be pretty good. Yeah, it started, started today at 9 a.m., yep. so. Yeah. Um, hmm, so we'll, we'll probably have some news on that next week on, on how PAX went. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with Sony and all this junk. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess the, the last thing I want to add too is is if they're not going to do the the UHD drive in there, it's like mm-hmm. when developers they're required now starting in you know, basically October to basically develop two modes for a game, right? yeah, a base mode and a a neo mode, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you have a, a a regular PlayStation Four or if you have the the, the neo. And you download the game digitally. You're gonna to have to download both in one. So like the downloads are gonna be like 80, 90 gigs now for a game. Think about that. I wonder the, if the that's assets an option to download. But no, they, they they don't want that. They, they, Sony's okay. like, no, you have to. All games must have that the full components. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. So like a, a patch could be like, oh, here's a download this 57 gig patch. You know, <laughs> like or even when you download the game, like because they have to have both assets in there, right? So yeah. it's like that's going to be a huge burden on on like hard drive space and download times and oh yeah, I my, wonder how that's going to affect things. Yeah, when I got Mortal Kombat X for the PC, my son wanted to get the DLC for it. I was like, yeah, whatever. Let's Twenty five gigs, thirty gigs, forty. Yep, forty yep. gigs. I was like, that Dude, is. When it. I downloaded Destiny, it was a fifty five gig download. I was like, Psh, man, what? I, I, I laughed because I was like, man, my first Penny and Base computer had like a two gig hard drive. I was yep. like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, we've come a long ways. <laughs> I remember I had a hard drive that wasn't even gigs back in the day. Remember, like your yeah. old. Oh old yeah, you're system? lucky if you had 500 megabytes or whatever. Oh, dude, yeah, I, I had a yeah, I had a 500 megabyte system, and that was like the that was the bee's knees, bro. Yeah, like, totally. yeah, that was it. Like I had my it's like 3300 or, or 333 megahertz, you know, 150 megabytes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, when I first opened my computer store, you know. Eight, like 80 gig drives are like, oh man, I have an 80 gig drive. Oh, I remember it's, that. It's huge, you know. In college, yeah, I, I had an 80 gig drive, and it was like the, the coolest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, I, like 40 40 gigs was kind of standard what you put in a computer, but to have 80, it was like mm-hmm. this is a monster hard drive. I can never fill this up. Yep. You know, and mm-hmm. I, I just built a computer for my friend the other day. He got a four terabyte hard drive in yep. his computer. Yep. And like I said, we talked about building me one soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get some Terra. I'm going to get some freaking petaflops. And yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. Petaflop. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'll be my hard drive. <laughs> Petabytes and stuff like that. You know, just an insane insanity. Uh, my, my, yeah, my chip will be running in petaflops, and my hard drive exactly. will be, hard drive will be in in petabytes. <laughs> Run triple SLI and you yep, know yep. sixty four gig quadruple uh, quadruple. Yeah. I'll just I'll have a I'll have a, a room dedicated just to GPU, <laughs> like just a small closet with this, like a coolant system in it and like seven that, GPUs running constantly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, that's it for news. You got anything else, my man? I think that's it for. Cool. Well, we have a fun show today, so now we can get to the cool, fun stuff. Uh, was, oh, yeah. yeah um, so we're going to take a little bit of a break, like we always do, and then we're going to come back with a couple good segments. Um, and yeah, so let's take a break, man. back from the break and we have a couple good segments going here so we are going to do a new thing i think we're going to start doing more often which um i'm excited for and i think you're you are too john um we're going to do a disabled gamers and accessible gaming segment where we just highlight a few things and that's going on in that part of the industry because obviously you have some expertise in there and we're both quote i guess self-proclaimed gaming experts and gaming, <laughs> gaming connoisseurs and but uh no in in all reality um, accessibility is something that you really really have a lot of skills in and yeah, yeah. i am actually i've learned a ton uh, from you from that um, as we've gone through and as our friendship is built and as we've done work together um, even as we do the podcast of, of what's accessible what's not um, accessible right yeah and so I think uh, 
and then you know having guests like Terry on, and then having even you talk about your gaming exploits, and you know we talked earlier in the podcast about how you're going to kind of move on to that realm. So I think this this segment um, it might not be weekly, but it'll be time to time. You know, yeah. just kind of highlighting something in there. You know, a new story. Um, so a topic in game in accessibility or just whatever we want to do it is going to be pretty cool um, yeah absolutely what, what, what are you thinking about all that yeah I'm looking forward to doing that I, I think you know there's uh, obviously there's more than just me you know b- blind people playing games and not even just blind people like you know just imagine trying to play a game with the use of one hand mm-hmm. like how do people deal with that and they, they'll still wreck people on the other end that have two hands yep. you know People so, with epilepsy, people with you know learning disabilities, people. There's so many different ways that you can make games accessible, yeah. you know, or that people have so many different ways that they push through difficulties to play games because games are fun. Games unify us, you know. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And, you know, even like with Sony, the the guy had cerebral palsy. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You know, so that people have all kinds of various hurdles, even if it's not blind, but they they still like you said they love the game just because they're. Uh, you know, have some sort of disability or whatever doesn't mean they wouldn't enjoy playing a game. Yep, exactly. So, um, so there's a lot of stuff out there. Like uh, Able Gamers, I think we've talked about that before. They do a lot of yeah. good stuff um, yeah. for charities for games. I think every year, I think they try to get to 500,000. They're going to be at PAX. So if you guys are at PAX and you're listening to this and you want to donate to a good cause, Able Gamers is a good cause too. Yeah, to I think they. I think they show up at E3 too. I yep. think they usually yep. hang out there too. So yeah, I just checked their website, but they just had a big thing about what their PAX booth and like I said, they will be at E3 and. They usually go to all the big conferences, but yeah, they they try to get five hundred thousand every year. I think they're at like ninety right now or so. I think the last time I checked, it was like earlier, I think yesterday or so. Um, mm. But they do some good stuff. It's a good, at a good pace, they're already a quarter into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, they're and then they haven't even hit the big stuff yet, like PAX or E three. So yeah, um, check them out, all that kind of stuff. But they do a lot of stuff with accessibility in games, and I guess I wanted to. <laughs> Kind of highlight. There's some good stuff out there. I don't want to start the these the segment off too negative. We'll probably <laughs> we'll, we'll probably check out some other things as well. Um, I might pull some stories, but uh, there's a, a website that has some good content on there. But we're gonna put them on blast, right, John? <laughs> yeah, I, I have to. And so it's kind of funny. Like we're being positive with accessibility, but accessibility is a thing. Um, so there's a website called Unstoppable Gamer. So if you are part of Unstoppable Gamer, please contact us because we will help you <laughs> with a couple things. Um, the consulting. <laughs> yes, um, Unstoppable Gamer is a website. There, I'm going to pull it up right now. And man, John, it looks pretty. It yeah, is I've, visually I've, appealing. <laughs> it, it is so. It, it is. It's a fantastically beautifully visually designed website. Um, it has stuff like news stories, like here, um, let's see some news stories that are based on, like here, the last news story is like, um, Xbox One dashboard update um, overview, so for accessibility, the Steam mm-hmm. controller um, hardware accessibility review, um, topics, an interview with um, a disabled gamer who plays Diablo, um, an opinion piece that said Xbox needs a, a more accessible way to access a lot of its features, you know, some, some good stuff here, and then it has... Um, accessible reviews for games. Like, so they have all these games, like the percentage are accessible. So like MLB The Show is 92%, so that's good, and mm. all these different things, right? But, oh, yeah. but what's the problem with this website, John? Uh, I can't read pretty much probably 75, 80% of it. It's like totally in- inaccessible. The website oh, itself the irony. <laughs> is inaccessible. You, you said it perfectly. Oh, the irony. So... Um, yeah, before the podcast, I was like, hey, you know, check out this website. I'm like, all right, yeah. And, and, and he, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of like wary. I was like, I want to see what you <laughs> And he could hear my computer through the, you know, through our my sound setup. And he could tell before I even said anything. I was like, yeah, dude, this site is not accessible. He's like, I could tell. Because <laughs> he could just hear my screen reader just saying like link, 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 link. Like nothing was labeled properly. And I was just like. You know, this is, it's kind of funny, but not at the same time, you know, but... Which brings like, us oh, to man. our topic, I guess. So, we're using Unstoppable Gamer, and we're going to slam you guys right now, slightly, but it's we're just using it as an example of accessibility on websites and gaming, etc., right? So, yeah. accessibility extends, like, like we just said, to a lot of different mediums, um, and... For this one, it's hard to hit all of them. It really is. But one of the big thing is blind gamers are are right now starting to really kind of 
hit the marketplace and really try to like you know take the next step forward in gaming like it, it, with the 2d platformers it was a lot easier and then when the once the 3d realm came out it was just difficult to get back on but now the games have gotten a little bit better so they can i think probably master them better and i think john you're probably going to find this out very soon that hey like you'll be able to hear the sound effects and be able to play games yeah. again right yeah but it just goes it's just interesting to me that a an ex, an ex, a website based on accessibility and trying to get out there, uh, it, their tagline for this website is the web's number one site for gamers with disabilities. And they just kind of so blatantly disregard... Um, like the accessibility of the website itself. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and of, of blind people in this sense. Um, and now, yeah, yeah. now I, I hate to like throw them under the bus because they're not the only ones. Um, oh, there's no. a lot of websites do that, especially websites you know, based on gaming that aren't accessible as it is. And so, right. I, I think I think why I bring this up is more is because of, of the irony, right? Because of that, um, uh, the the biggest thing is we do news stories every week, right, John? And yep. what's the biggest thing that is is the biggest hurdle? If I send you a link, it that's not happening. What? Because all the plugins and the advertisements on the page just make ruin oh, yeah. it for I mean, you, right? Any any news site, they're so buried with like ads and and all kinds of stuff. I can, my screen reader can never even get to the story, and mm -hmm. if it can manage to get to the story, mm -hmm. it can't read it anyways because of the way they format the page. Right. That it's almost as if the article is like embedded as sort of like an image. Yep. So I can't read the story anyway. So when we do the news stories, I told you at the beginning, I was like, dude, you're going to have to like just mm -hmm. cut and paste the stories and put them yep. in a document for me so I can read them. Yeah, and like I said, like I, I've done that for a while now because I know that for John. So And, and it makes it even me even more aware. Like... It, I'm sure people out there, when you click on a news story, it takes like five minutes to load up because all the freaking Google plugins are messing with your cookies. And, oh, you looked at this on Amazon last week? Well, you might like this. Or, hey, check this exactly. out. All, you know, so it's just a rant and like the video is auto-playing. It's just a mess. And if it's a mess for us who are sighted, imagine what it's like for someone who uses a screen reader. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah. And, and so that – and this, this goes to all video game websites. And so we're – this is – kind of a thing i guess this is our topic in the, in the in the in the segment is kind of the accessibility of of websites and accessing content within video games so let's not even extend it to all websites out there because it, it should extend to all websites out there yeah. but we're going to do like to the gaming websites right now because we're focusing on gaming because even the big sites like kotaku and GameSpot and they're not accessible like they no, really aren't they're, they're all horrendous it, it, it's it's hard for someone to get access so where does someone like you who's blind john go to get your gaming knowledge i mean you can use like, like i said i use feedly or some other news aggregate site and then yeah, i use yeah, and i use a reader yeah, view I mean, it's, yeah, you mean you'd basically have to use some sort of like you know plugin in Firefox or you know something like Feedly, like you're saying, that can strip all the garbage out and kind of like use like an RSS feed or whatever mm -hmm. just to get to the plain text, you know. Yeah, exactly. Or or do what I've done for years, and you know you subscribe to ten thousand podcasts and you listen to them at four times the speed, and then that's how you get your content, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> right. that, that's that's you know in the past ten years or whatever, that's normally how I get my news now. Is I'll just subscribe to zillions of podcasts and listen to them ridiculously fast because it's easier to do that than to try and maneuver through a website. Mm -hmm. And you know? and that's kind of reason why like we're calling out this uh, the, the unstoppablegamer.com. It's just like okay. You want to be the number one website for accessibility, but you aren't accessible in it of itself. And this, right. isn't, this isn't to say that websites should just be some plain generic grossness. Like have some visual appeal because yeah, no, you know, it, blind you people can, aren't the only people with disabilities, right? Right. Yeah, you can do it. You can you can still look good, but still be accessible. And it can be done, obviously. But you know, it, it, I mean, you would think it would come across their mind at least. You know, because they're thinking of accessibility. But if you took like a regular website. I mean, 9 out of 10 people that I talk to, even just about accessibility in general, or like if I approach developers that, I'm like, hey, I tried using your app the other day, but I'm blind, and the screen reader couldn't read this, that, or the other thing, and the developer, 9, nine, nine times out of 10, will be like, I never considered a blind person using my app. Right. You know, and so web people with, like, that build websites, regular ones, would be like, you know what, I never really thought about it, never thought of, you know, a blind person reading the screen, like, I, mm -hmm. I never considered it. So, you know, nine times out of ten, it's out of kind of ignorance, and they just never thought of it. But with this this website, I mean, come on, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, well, actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually clicking around on this, and this will kind of give you a little bit more perspective. I don't think you think they 
think of a blind gamer right now because get this so it's all like um, physically kind yeah, of well no not necessarily so here i'm gonna step back a second so with the unstoppable gamer or other game related sites you know especially i mean i'm, I'm even sure like i'm not even sure if able gamer is, is that accessible um it probably isn't because i know i know from uh, i'll, from, I'll look, go look right now <laughs> i know from i know from them they're they're more focused on you know like physically yeah, uh, people with physical disability. Well, I guess blind's physical, but I mean more I like you know, more like you only use of one hand, or maybe you have a, you know some fingers amputated, or you know, or maybe you can't use your hands. Maybe you have to use your feet to right. control. You know, so they they more cover barriers like that. Like maybe you're quadriplegic. How do you play a game? You know, so they they, they more focus on that type of you know able gamers. You know, right. I don't even think like you said. I I actually don't think they consider blind. Or, you know, not that they don't consider right. blind gamers, but I don't, I'm not sure if they really cover blind gamers even on that site. Right. Well, this uh, the Unstoppable Gamers is a WordPress site. Um, uh, but so well, you, what they should do here, you, what they should do here, what I was thinking. What, you kind of have to go out of your way to make a WordPress site not accessible. <laughs> right. Well, the, 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 and the thing is, too, here, this is what I was saying. If you go to um, Japan. Or like whatever government dot jp or the Japanese government site. Yeah. There's a little click button at the top that says make English. Mm. Right? Yep. Why can't it be a little button or a drop down at the top that's you can find it through accessibility through a screen reader that says make it yeah blind accessible. Yeah, there are a couple of websites now that like Amazon does that. Yeah. Like it it says like, oh if you're if you're a user of a screen reader, click here. Now which is good and bad. Good because it's you know they're recognizing you know that people are using screen readers, but bad because I can't say for Amazon's that their site's actually pretty accessible without having to click on that. So I never click on that. But Google is like the worst offender of this. Like all of their stuff, like Gmail, Google Apps, anything Google. Well, YouTube's pretty accessible, but Google Plus. That is a complete accessibility train wreck. Oh my like, god, dude! It, it's it's not, dude. That's for people who have eyes and can see. Eyes accessibility <laughs> bad. I can't even navigate that crap, bro. It's, <laughs> but it's mean, terrible. But Google Docs and Gmail are all horrifically inaccessible. But on Gmail, they have a thing that says, "Oh, if you're using a screener, click here." And it puts it in what they call a basic HTML mode. Yep. Which, when you do that, yes, it becomes 100% accessible. But it comes at a cost where they basically neuter, you know, 50% of what Gmail can actually do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so it's like it comes at a cost to be accessible. Like mm-hmm. if I put in that basic HTML mode, I can't do Hangouts. I can't do, you know, any like half the stuff you can do if mm-hmm. you go to Gmail. So right. it's like what's the point? You right. know, well, th- th- so that's that goes with like a that's almost like a platform and and, and yeah, and browser I, app. I, I tell I tell people the web should not be an application. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and this, but like for a site like this uh, for the unstoppable gamer, there should be like again like a like a, an a language oh. or drop down. Yeah, like yeah. just like click it or you know in the screen reader, boom, like blind impaired, boom, there yeah. you go. Blind yeah, even access, if, blind accessible. Even if yeah, even if it does what Gmail kind of does, like you know, just puts it in this like straight up. You know, obviously, if I'm blind, but there's no I, functionality. I, All it is is reviews and I, insights. This should yeah, be easy. That's, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I could care less what it looks like. So if it strips away all of the bling, yeah. but I it keeps all the text, that's fine by me. Like, I don't right. care. You know, like as long as I can right. navigate it. That's what I'm saying. So I think it should be it's a language. It, it almost is a language. It, it's a language that you're using to read this page. Right. You know, so it, it's in a language drop on that should be there. So. Here, here, here's the other side of the thing I want to mention. So I think that'd be the biggest fix, it, and they should no, definitely be on that tough. Yeah. Um, there's a little um, a menu drop down on the far left, and it opens up the navigation. You so you understand, you know how WordPress sites yeah. go, right? So yeah. it's a little, you know, the typical more thing, and it opens up a slider that comes out the left side, and it has three options. It says navigation. It says I am, I am a one-handed gamer. I'm a deaf gamer. I'm a colorblind gamer. Ah. Huh, but interesting. no, but it's not what you think. Oh, so that, but it's two things. A that shows you who they're focusing on. Right, right. So blind is not even there, or other things, cerebral palsy, all these things. But yeah. you click on them, and it just. I click on one-handed gamer. It, it, um, aggregates all the posts that are tagged with one-handed gamer. 
or aggregates all the colorblind posts or aggregates uh, all uh, of the deaf uh, gamer posts. So it doesn't even change the functionality? No, nothing. Of the site. nothing. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so that's what that does. Okay. So uh, th- th- that's what I'm saying is you as a, quote, blind gamer, um, uh, it's just how do you access gaming news? How do you get what you need from the gaming industry? Not, not, let's not only focus on getting over the hurdle of actually you learning and, and defeating that uh, challenge of playing the games, right? That That's yeah. in and of itself. Right. But what if you need to look up a strategy guide? What if you want to learn the new uh, on a new patch? Here's How here's you... here's a per example of that uh, when, with Street Fighter Five or no M- Mortal Kombat X because I, I I never when I could see I never played it so I was like right, okay right. there's got to be sites where I can learn you know the guys fatalities moves, and stuff you know? like that. yeah so I was like let me you know so I searched it I found the site and I could choose whatever character I wanted and it would show me all the moves I was like perfect so I'm clicking around and I. I and, you know, and I, I was telling Ted before the podcast, I'm probably going to start using Ken Shi on uh, Mortal Kombat X because he's blind. And I was like, that, that works for me. So I'm looking at his moves. <laughs> it shows the moves in images. Mm-hmm. How to do the moves. I was like, are you kidding me? Like So, <laughs> so it was you, like, you, oh. You just, you just want the up, down, square, exactly. triangle, left, left, right. But they were showing right. that within an image. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. are you kidding me? So I had to have my son, you know, he read it to me, and I just, there wasn't that much, so I just memorized everything. But I was right. like, man, you know, I was like, even that, like, you know, I, I had to get help doing that, you know? I mean, if you spend some time, you can search around for that. But then, that's, again, that's spending time to have right. to search around for, like, because you go to the old facts. Remember the old game facts that were just, like, right. the huge plane that the notebook text for? It's just, like, up, up, left, right, down, down, strangle, here, 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 right. you know, like. Okay, cool. That's a move. That's what I want. That's, that's all you need, you know? Yep, huh. exactly. Well, see, in the, yeah, that, that's, that's a perfect example of that. So I guess that's my thing. So for this first round of topics, it's like, hey, let's just get into it. Like, hey, like, accessible gamers, how can you access the content? And this is obviously why, because the accessibility hurdle that John faces is blindness. So that's what we're focusing on right now. And it's, it's a big one right now when it comes to the lack of resources for that. Um, and I think the accessibility aspect of it from, from that standpoint on web pages on especially gaming related to news sites is not up to par yet. Well, um, and, and you know what? I th- and now again, a lot of people probably think also like, well, there's not that many blind people in the world. I mean, you know, you can't expect to, you know, do what. But there's, you know, roughly like 360 million blind people throughout the world. Like, that, that's that's not a number to scoff at, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's and and then, you know, t- and that's not all totally like blind like I am, but. It, it, it you know different ranging of of blindness, but still 360 million people. Like, it's it's not a small number. It's the whole you know our whole country full of blind people yeah in, in the world you know so they, there's a lot of people out there i think that uh, that you know have vision you know problems or whatever so it, it's uh it, it's worth company that's why i said before companies underestimate the amount of people with you know disabilities there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot more people out there than they think and they think it's not monetarily worth their time to to look into it but it is Yep, totally. Even so, though that shouldn't be the focus, but no, no, it's not that it shouldn't be the focus. But as far if you if your product is used by a demographic, you probably should address that. Concern, yeah, well, right. I mean, the perfect example is like you know the, the the blind community as a whole. I'll say, if we find out a company kind of goes above and beyond the Call of Duty, you to jump make on them. Some- yeah, Everyone to make sure there. something's accessible, everyone yep. says, "Oh, go buy the go." So you know, if you're doing that, you're opening yourself up to a few hundred, you know, more million customers than you had mm-hmm. before. Yeah, that, totally. that's why so many blind people love the Apple products because they yeah. are extremely accessible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I myself have never owned one, and you know, I, I kind of said before, I I don't buy them for various reasons, but there's tons i mean tons and tons and tons of blind people use all apple stuff right well the the accessibility is there and they make it thing cuz if there's a whole tab in the settings accessibility and it's like 3000 pages thick of what you can yeah. do to customize your phone big exactly. font extra sound effects you know like reading modes color blind mode like all these different modes that help whatever you really have and it, you know it exactly yeah it, it, it is true and it's good but um 
but yeah, it, so there's so many ways to make things accessible. I think right now I just wanted to, today, uh, our first one, kind of focus on websites and you, and, and, and as far as a blind gamer, getting the stuff you need to get. And, it, and this is just, I think the way it just kind of came about is just, I'm like, oh, this site's really good. And then I was like looking at it and I'm like, but it's really pretty. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, unfortunately, when a site's really pretty, a lot of bells and whistles happen, a lot of fun sliders and yeah. you know, fade outs and fade ins and all these transitions and images with overlays and hover buttons. And instantly I'm like, nope, <laughs> that doesn't work. And so I was like, oh, this is a really good site. And then as soon as I opened it again, because I, I just glanced at it and looked at it and I opened it again and I showed John about it, I was like, yeah, it's probably not going to work too well. And like I said, link, link, link. I was like, yeah, this is not good. And it's just it's interesting that a site dedicated to um, gamers with disabilities and saying their tagline, the web's number one site for gamers with disabilities, is and, and so it seems inaccessible. And the isn't a disability to them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's not. And like I said, like I'm sure there – I mean, I'm looking at the site – personally and it's great it's got a lot of really cool stuff so nothing against what they're doing overall yeah, it's, the not, site. it's not the content it's no the, the content's great and i'm sure their hearts in the right direction in the right yeah. area but it's just it, that's me as a, a marketing expert and business person um you need to know your audience you need to know your demographic and you need to know your messaging yeah and th they miss the ball here essentially uh, really bad and um yeah, it's it's it's, it's rough. It, it just you know like it's 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 just a blatant dis disregard to a whole area of that marketplace. If they're trying to target a market and they just totally just cut out one huge chunk of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So. And if you, and if you do if you're listening and you run you have a website or whatever you know someone running some type of website, there are plenty of like free you know if you just search like accessibility website testers there's tons of you know free sort of things oh, you can yeah. use i mean they're going to pull up like false positives and stuff and they're not 100% perfect but at least if you just take that one step you'll be in a lot better shape than if you never you know bothered doing it right. you know so even that's worth you know checking out and the thing is too it's like hey let's say you have a website that you you need advertising to help run your website it's, it's your revenue stream right um and the, you have the plugins or the Google ad, whatever you have on there. It's not to say that don't do that because it's so inaccessible to screen readers, etc. And you shouldn't get your money. But I'm looking at like this site, Unstoppable Gamer. They don't have any advertisements. There's nothing. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not the advertisements making it accessible. It's just the the it's layout, the, the format, yeah. and what it is. It looks it, it looks really nice, and it's too drop down and very pretty. Yeah. And it's just. You don't want to sacrifice that visual acuity for uh, for something, but at least have a mode, you know. And, and that's so easy to have. You, it's easy to do. Like you know, it really is. Especially yeah. with this website where it's just content. It's just articles, you know, with content. Yeah, and, I always make fun of like the websites that I build. I you, I, I was talking to someone one time, and they're like, yeah, because they didn't know I was blind at at, at, at this point when, during in the conversation. Like, yeah, your website's kind of like simple looking or whatever. I mean, it's okay, but you know, how come you don't do more with it or whatever? And I was like, well, you know, I am blind. And he was like, oh, okay. And and I was like, so that's why it looks like the that's why the website looks like a blind guy built it because <laughs> I, I don't concentrate on the uh, the visual appeal to uh, to websites. Right. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you go. I think that's a good start to the segment. We'll, we'll, we're, it's important to to John and I um, to highlight a lot of things in the gaming industry. I think that's important to uh, to John, and, and it's become important to me as, as well as over, over the time I've, I've known John. And yeah, um, it, it's been brought to my. I mean, again, I've always been sensitive to the fact of that from from afar, right? Not yeah. having involvement with it, but now I'm directly involved with somebody uh, on, you know, a very often on a weekly basis. You know, two weeks this last time, but you know, on a basis where it's where it's in my life a lot more. So I'm a lot more sensitive to it and my, yeah. a lot more understanding. And John's given me a huge understanding of of it. Like, like John, like you really have. Like I really understand so much more, and I appreciate that. So it it allowed me to speak on a somewhat intelligent level. Um, <laughs> we'll say somewhat <laughs> on some of these things and and really kind of get. Um, get where you're coming from. So um, yeah. I think it is. It's it's important. So again, uh, as far as like the negatives, we're we're gonna do a lot of stuff like highlight gamers who have 
disabilities who are doing cool things. We're gonna do you know new stories, topics on in in the realm. So there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff. But this is just our start, just to say, hey, you know, hey, here's here's what it's kind of. Kind of the yeah, direction of it. This topic, we didn't approach this website with this topic, but then, like we said, when we discovered the total inaccessibility, we we're like, oh, the irony. So I guess yeah. we'll talk about that instead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's kind of how it came about. And that's that's how this will be. It'll just kind of be, you know, off the cuff and just like, hey, what what's going on with the story? Because it's 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 something that you know, John and I we we, we deal with every day. I I don't personally have to deal with it, but I do through John, and so it's. It's something that's it's important, so um, I, I like it. So I think that was a good 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 first run, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Um, okay. Next segment that's going to be kind of fun. We've kind of done it before, but we're going to focus on this now. Um, the sound of gaming. Oh yeah. Uh, so this is instead of just doing guess that game and all this stuff, we're going to do the sound of gaming. And this segment of the show is a, is uh, an appreciation of video game sound in some way. I have always been a huge fan sound or excuse me found I've been a huge fan of sound and music in video games. I love video game soundtracks. I'm a nerd for them. Like it's just so great. Like when I play a video game, I listen to the music. I'm just like, wow, this is great. Um, the sound yeah. effects, like you, you hear like a sword slashing, and if it sounds weird, it messes you up. But if it sounds perfect, you're like, oh, that's that's it. Or a sound of like. In in Final Fantasy VII, the materia clinking when you equip it on on the sword, it's, it's mm-hmm. burned in your brain, you know. And so, um, this is we, we we're gonna do a lot of things with this, and this is a medium that that you, John, can like consistently be right on the cutting edge without have to worry about accessibility, right? Oh yeah. Like sounds and games. I mean, shoot, you can listen to the brand new soundtrack and see if it's good or not. You know, like, <laughs> right? That I mean, you, plus you with your music background, like yeah. you're you know musically inclined, you're a musician yourself. So, um, yeah, we're excited to start doing this a little more. Um, so for this week's sound of gaming, though, we're gonna gonna keep it keep it old school, keep it our roots, and uh, do a little bit of guess that game um, based on some. It's a multiple games, but kind of um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the soundtracks as well. Okay. But uh, but yeah, so um, John, who do you, do you want to start? Or yeah, you... I'll start with your games. I have three oh. games for you. Ah, uh, yes. So and, uh... I, I selected three games for John and for you, John, and I want you to try to guess the game. And uh, they're they're kind of tough, and like again, I don't expect this to be awesome at this. It's just kind of more of a fun <laughs> thing, um, more nostalgic thing. But uh, two of them should be gettable. Okay. Um, one of them is a little bit obscure, but not like to the point where it's like, what that that game sold two, two you know, forty copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. So um. Guess that game. So um, I have three for John. I think John has three for me. So. Okay. So you want me to do yours number for one. me? Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so we're gonna do you first, John. Um. Number one, and these are all NES titles. Okay. Okay. So here we so go. So we'll play about thirty, twenty to. 20 seconds, and I'll just tell you when to cut it. Okay, so oh, the first so, title is number one, and uh, you can have whatever you need to get it. So okay, go ahead, go. play. I'm on it now. Here we go. I'm pressing enter. And there we go. <laughs> okay. Um, Any ideas? Man, it's so funny to hear to, to hear it. I'm, uh, it's it's weird when you hear something and you're it's not in context. Right, and it's true. Like the thing is, like that music was resounding with, with me because I played that game a ton, and it's. Um, do, would you like a hint? I feel like I've played I, I I've played it some. I'm sure, but, you have. Yeah. But would, would you want a hint? Yeah, I'll take one hint. Okay, one hint. Um, it's a two. It's often a two-player game where you can hit the other player. It's a co-op, but you can this is, this you, you, you can shot, hurt each other. This is a shot in the dark, and this not you know ignore the pun. Is is it Battle Toads? Ding ding ding! Battle Toads, it is. That is the theme music for Battle Toads. Nice right. job. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. never owned that game, but I, I rented it a couple of times, and one of my friends had it. So that's why I was like, oh, I feel like I've heard it, but 
I can't... have played that game for pro- close to probably six, seven hundred hours at least in my lifetime. Maybe more than that. My sister yeah. and I used to play that constantly. Like that was like our go-to. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I play that. Six hundred hours is probably that's like um, a, a month. <laughs> I play ah. that. So, yeah. So that's one of my favorite games. I just remember loading that up every every day and just letting the music play because I enjoyed it when I was you know seven, eight, and I just loved it. Um, but yeah, that, that's a good theme song. Um, the rest of the the soundtrack to that game is pretty awesome too. Um, a lot of people hate on Battletoads. They say it's a terrible game because it's so hard or it's just a bad game. But it, it's just really fun, especially when you play it with a with someone else, a friend. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, and you can beat each other up. So, but yeah, good job, Battletoads. Okay. Nice Let's job. See. Let's see. We're on number two now. Number two. This one's a little, little little tougher. I only I again my friend had this game. I just okay. remember I remember this soundtrack. Okay, go. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. Fine now. Oh man. Man, it's that. NES just, title. Uh, so it's, okay, I was thinking one game, but I, I'm glad we clarified NES because I'm like, no, they actually didn't make that in the NES. Um, mm-hmm. Would you like a hint? Yeah, I guess I'll take it one hint. Um, it's kind of a double hint. It's a beat 'em up. Um, that's okay, kind it's of. A, it's it's what I was thinking. Okay, and it's, it's, it's kind of like Double Dragon. Okay, all right. So I was kind of, that's kind of the, where I was going towards. Okay. Um, if you get in this one, I'll be really impressed. I actually think I own this. I can picture the cover on the, on the game itself. Well, um, tell me what the cover looks like, and then I'll and I'll give it to you if if you. There's like what, two what you remember? two guys on the cover, right? Okay. Yes. Um, I want to say they're facing away, like kind of they're kind of staying together but facing away from each other. Yeah, kind of. They're like a you know a team or whatever like Double Dragon. Uh huh. Um. Oh man. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I think you got it. I'm cl- that I, I I'm almost picturing the title now. I'm just like trying to recall the. Uh... I, I you got it. I think you know it. You want me to tell it? <sighs> give me give me ten more seconds. Um. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it's like when it's like when that thing's almost off the tip of your tongue. You know, it's yeah. like it's right there. Oh, man. I, I know you know it. <sighs> Not. Oh, man. Starts with an R. Uh, Renegade. No. River no. City Ransom. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. River City Ransom. Yeah, that's... Uh, I played this a bunch with my buddy. He had this game. I didn't have... I used to borrow it from him. Uh, I, yeah. I, like, yeah, I had that game. I played it all the time. That's why I'm like, oh, man, I can picture the cover. It's like a, it's like a poor man's Double Dragon, but it's, yes, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, yeah, I, I liked it because I liked beat 'em ups back in the day. I liked Battletoads, loved Double Dragon, um, and stuff like that. So that, those are my jams. But yeah, good job. So I'll give that to you. That, that's wow, right. good job, Johnny. You're on a roll. <laughs> Dang, and I have to pick it up. Um, I think all the games you selected for me were Sega Genesis, right? Yeah, I got yeah. Oh. That, so you should. I I didn't pick anything too crazy. So you'll, okay, okay. You'll probably... All right. So number three here. This is the, the third one here. This is not the title screen, but it, it's the theme music at the end. So. Okay. Um, for hopefully, uh, hopefully, I beat it. <laughs> yeah, right. And that, and that, you know, exactly what I was thinking in my head. I was like, ah, should I put the other one, like the title screen music? But the title screen wasn't like the theme. Uh, uh, but we'll we'll see. If not, I'll, I'll play you the title screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, actually, skip ahead to a little bit if you can, to like like thirty seconds in. Whoops. Ah. Uh, That's all right. Yeah, I skipped too much. So uh, it doesn't matter. In the middle, it'll be fine. This game. I, I might know what this is. Go. Well, I'll, I'll preface it. This this is a game that has more than one. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. 
I might not know exactly which one it is. Well, just just say one of them. I guarantee you'll get it. Is it Mega Man Two? Oh no, that's it, it, no, but it, it gets good good kind of guess. But it does start with an M though. Oh, is it Metroid? No, it's no? Metal Gear, the first uh-huh. one. Oh, okay. Metal Gear. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's the end music to Metal Gear, the first one. Uh, I oh, I used to when I was a kid and I beat that for the first time. I mean, I used. Game Genie the first time. But I, che- I, cheated. <laughs> I actually kind of loathed the first Metal Gear. It, it was so hard. That's so why I used it Metal was. Gear. But I, Metal Gear 2 was my favorite but by far um, yeah. of those. But my favorite of all Metal Gears is Metal Gear Solid, um, the first one. I'm on, on PlayStation. Um, but no, that's Metal Gear, the very okay. first Metal yeah, Gear was, game. And mega. I remember hearing that music. Wow, this is so good. And epic because I beat it. It was so hard. I was like, wow. And so I, I remember <laughs> that game. So yeah, that, that's the ending credits music to Metal Gear. So nah. good job there, Jonathan. Impressive. Two out of three. Two out of three That's hearts. pretty good though. One and, and a half out of three. But, but you, and you were close. To, it 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 does kind of have a little Metal Gear or uh, Mega Man vibe. Yeah, that, that's why I thought I thought it was Mega Man. I can I'm um, I'm on with Mega Man soundtracks. If you go Mega Man two, Mega Man three, I could name the level they came from almost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, my turn now. I guess yeah. Here we go. We'll move over to yours here. Uh, okay, so here's here's the first one. Two, I'll give you. I'll give, obviously there, there's Sega Genesis games. Two of these, two out of the three, mm-hmm. are actually sports games. Ooh, okay. Well, all right, all right. So. Yep, yep. Let's do it. So, so here's bring it the, on, man. Bring it on. You, th- this first one, you if once I let it play a little bit into it, you might be able to guess because it's this audio is someone sort of starting the game. And okay, they were, gotcha, gotcha. And then they started playing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, there's no, you know, they're not talking over it. Go ahead. But, so yeah. you might be able to guess what it is a little further into it. So here, here we go. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll, the audio will pick back up. He's like. Is it? Oh. That, get, that gets it away. <laughs> no, I. I, I probably played. Uh, I have, I have two two games in my head that I want to say. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can really give you another hint without really kind of giving no, away. No, 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 no. It, it's fine. I won't get, let me see. I'm sure listeners are like, oh, let's let's hear that. They're like, there's people listening like, dude, it's that stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, but hold on. It, you're right. Without content, hmm. I can really only say it's sports without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, man, this also was. Uh, here, here's a hint I can probably give you without really giving away what it what uh-huh. it is. This was probably. One of the top five games sort of pushed when they first started promoting the Genesis. Okay. Um, Due to its graphics. Hmm. I would say. I'm just just out of there. I'm I'm I, don't, I have one of two, but I don't I don't think it's this one. But is it Joe Montana football? No, I was gonna do that one, but it says like "Welcome to Joe Montana okay. Football," so I was like, "Oh, I can't use that." And you can't cut it out. Yeah, you could have maybe started it like thirty seconds in. I know that theme music. Um, yeah, that what, 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 what game what, is it? What was your other one? What was your other guess? I was gonna say Mutant League Baseball. No, James Buster Douglas Boxing. Oh yeah, see, I, that was my other one. I was like, oh man, nice. Okay. Yeah, like, it, like, like, like I, I, said, I heard the ding ding. I heard the bell. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know it's the boxing, well, I but I, I don't you, remember the I name. Too, too further into it, you might kind of guess what it is. I did not remember the name of that game, but I, was, I could okay. see. I was like, oh, I know that's the boxing game that I played, but I was like, I yep. have no clue. Okay. Yeah, that was that was touted one of the you know most graphically, yep. you know. Buster Douglas boxing. Yeah. Alrighty. So that's the, okay. Uh, right on. Yep. So here's here's number two. This this also I'll say is a sports game. Okay. So. On the not Genesis. not the same sport. But. On the Genesis. <laughs> what? Yeah, on the Genesis. Correct. Uh, all right. Here we go. Hmm. 
This is them. Is it a racing game? No, no. It's a sport you've played. Yes. Is it, is it NBA Jam? Close. Yep. NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Pat Riley Basketball. Oh. So it was a basketball game, though. I, I played, yeah. Uh, I had three basketball games on my... I had NBA Jam, NBA Jam TE, and then I had... What one was that with uh, the Was Houston it Jordan Rockets? versus Bird? Did they make no, that? No, it was like NBA Live 94. That was like my okay. favorite. NBA Live 95, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, see, over 2. All right, well, that, there you go. Pat Riley Basketball, that's a good one. That, that's a good simulator one, too. Yeah. All right, so here's here's the last one. This is not a sports game. Gotcha. And you've, I believe you've talked about this game before, and you've said you liked it, so you might. You, All right. I'm I'll hoping listen. you'll be able to. Right, like, i, I got to get one. Come on. Yeah. So here we go. Just let me find. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. And I, I think this, uh, unfortunately, this isn't like the opening music. I think this is one of the, one of the levels. Well, that's fine. Let's see. So, huh? Give me a hint. It's River City Ransomish, Double Dragonish. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, um. Uh. uh Streets of Rage Two. Yes, Streets yes. of Rage. Yep. Yes. Yep. There you go. Yes. You. You. Who is your guy? You played as. Blade was that his yeah. name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was Axel. I, that was yeah. my favorite guy. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. There you go. Um, cause that, that was the first one. Yeah. Rage? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought you might have gotten the Pat Riley one. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I, I definitely played Pat Riley. I definitely played yeah. that a lot. So. I knew there's various, you know, basketball ones, but that one stuck out in my mind. So. Yeah. I, I played Pat Riley. I played more for more simulation ones. I played NBA Live or yeah, NBA Live. That was my main one. Ninety five. So, oh no, NBA Action '95. That was it. NBA Action. Okay. Yeah, that was my jam. All right. Well, there you go. Um, sweet. Um, so you did the NES run. You did good, dude. Um, you got the Battletoads action, River City Ransom, and Metal Gear. So. And then yeah, mine. Yeah, Metal Gear. I thought it was Mega Man, but yeah, you know, that, that, that was okay. I could, it was not close. The name of River City Ransom. I could picture the. At you first, I was so thinking bad dudes, but yeah, I was like, yeah. That's oh, not bad it. dudes. Yeah, but they had sunglasses on though when they yeah, had it on the cover. Yeah. Now, these guys, so like, yeah, you were pretty close in the cover too. They they were kind of facing, but they were like, they were both facing straight ahead, but their their heads were looking different ways, and they yeah. were like kind of right next to each other. Yeah, yeah. I was I was surprised you got the cover pretty well. Like you you knew it, so good good call. <laughs> not, not bad for you know thirty something years ago, and that's what I'm saying. I've yeah, been not but, seen for like twenty years. <laughs> yeah, what, what that game came? Like, hold on, let me see. That game came out in. Have it right here. Right, I'm guessing between 86 April and 25th, 1989. Oh, 89. Okay. Or it was an early Genesis game, or, or yeah. early, I mean, late NES game. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, 89. So wow, that's yeah, 26 years, 27 years ago. <laughs> yeah, so um, crazy. Um, well, right on, dude. So um, I guess uh, we'll take one more quick break, just get some emails, and then get on out of here. What do you say? Sounds good. Alrighty, I'll take a little break here and we'll be back shortly. And we're back. All right. All right. Good, good fun on the music seven. I like that. Um, 
my might get a new step up my uh, music trivia skills. I'm probably gonna have to start going back and listen to all my <laughs> my soundtracks here soon, well, so we can start pulling them out. When well, I start well, messing, when I start messing around with Mortal Kombat X, you know, I'm wearing the headphones while I'm playing. And I'm like, whew, man, this is some pretty cool, yeah, you know, sound effects and music. I was like, man, we'll, we'll, we'll do that sucked, too. Sucked we'll, into it. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do that too. We'll do like highlights and explain what we liked about certain soundtracks. We'll do like. The best sound effects ever. We'll do a lot of different things when it comes to music and sounding games, but yeah. uh, that, that one's always fun to do some old school throwbacks. I'm sure some people who are listening are like, "Oh, I know that game," or they knew when we didn't. But that that's fun. So, um, yeah, let's just jump into some emails. We're getting uh, long as as usual, like we always do. <laughs> so uh, we, we don't need a, of a guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No guest today. We just us hanging out. Um, let's just jump into this. Um. I guess there's, there's a couple serious ones and some some cool ones. So let's just let's just rock and roll. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want to write into the show, you can do so at the email address provided, which is jtexgamecast at rappercow.com. So the first email comes in from Derek from South Bend, Oregon. He says, "Hi guys, what do you think the future of game development brings? We've heard so many big publishers closing their studios. Do you think the games industry should unionize? Or should there be regulations put into place to stop big companies from firing staff just because the game has shipped? Mm. Now, this is interesting because this email was actually sent in uh, about 10 days ago before all this stuff has gone down. There's been a lot of stuff floating around the news about um, some game studios and being up in arms about the crunch you know, at the very end of a game cycle where they work 90 hours a week for unpaid right. overtime just to get the game out. And it so this comes in perfect timing. Like he, he like, foresaw this. What, uh, what what do you think, man? Like, I've always said that, I mean, the game industry is rough. Like, they, they literally, they build a team, they ship a game, and then they're fired right afterwards. Like, yeah. That's not cool. Um, yeah. I, I, think, I think a gaming union would be great um, or, or some way to keep kind of a core staff together so like they're hired per project right so you hire the team to create the game right so right. you don't hire one person out of a team like you you can but like you hire this team they create the game right and so they know it's the per project basis almost or, or something along the lines of that instead of just oh you're going to work for the studio you're an employee of the studio um and then bye bye you know yeah i think that's something it should be maybe more sort of like contract based or something yeah like yeah, we're hiring you to work on Metal Gear 10 or whatever. Um, when that's over, you know, we're either, we'll either sign you on to another project we're doing, or we'll, you know, cut, you know, split our split ways. Right. And at least then you're expecting it too. Like if you know, okay, the game's almost released, I need to start looking for another job, boss. You know, another contract mm-hmm. possibly or whatever. Right. And at least you're a little more prepared, you know, as the employee. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, I, I think. That addresses that. I think that that'd be good because again, for teams, like uh, teams work well together, right? So if yeah. you have a core group of you know like ten people, like a couple artists, a couple developers, you know, a couple QA guys, a, a producer, designers, writers, you know, like and you have like a team of ten people who work really well together, you essentially can create your own little mini cohort team studio team. thing and be <laughs> like, yeah, or your little team. And that the the studios who want to create the game, these publishing companies, can hire you to create the game. Yeah. Right? Just try to keep yeah. it together, and then you can hire some extra moving parts. Oh, we need some more artists to the team, and they can be con- so it becomes an old contract thing, right? So I think that's a cool way to do it. That might be in the future. Um, huh, that that's actually I, I don't know if you're kind of going down that trail, but I just I just thought of this. That would be interesting. Say if you know ten people got together, like you said, like. Some writers, some graphic art designers, a couple of developers, like kind of what you need maybe to do like sort of an indie game in a sense or whatever. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool if all ten of those people sort of com- like put together their own little unit mm-hmm. and they could basically contract themselves out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like you, yeah, they're, yeah. they're like their own thing and they contract like themselves out. Like so, you hire the team to come in and make the game. So right. like, hey, we, and then if you need extra, like okay, we need you know. This is our core team. Our core unit works together, but we're obviously when we come in, we need we we need twenty people. We have ten. We, this is our core unit. Then we're gonna need you know three extra designers. We need one two, one programmer and who who works well in you know in Ruby because we want to do this sense. We need you know this many and we need one marketing person to do this and that'll help us with the game. Yeah. You know, but, but your core team is hired, right? But the, yeah, it feels yeah. like your core contracting group. 
Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, and and, then, and that goes to that. But the other side of the coin is okay. Let's say that I mean that's far fetched, right? But the unionization, like let's say we don't go that route, and they still work for companies. What about unionization to stop the ninety hour a week crunches where like they don't leave the office and they're seriously up at six a.m. and you're working until three a.m. for you know for two months straight just to get a game shipped? Like that's not cool, you know. And yeah, like and probably- if they go home, they're yelled at, or they, you know the game's not going to finish, and it, it's just a mess. There, it, the only problem with that though is who, who's going to sacrifice themselves or whatever to even to get it started. Like, yeah, you know, it, it, it's almost too late in a sense at this point. You know, every studio, you know, big studio especially, is going to do whatever they can do to keep to, to make sure that doesn't stir up. You know, mm-hmm. like Walmart does everything they can do to make sure no one you know unionizes. They'll they 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 do everything they can to make sure that the employees don't come together, and right. so. You know, they have to be like a you know Jimmy Hoffa kind of person in the gaming industry to try and yeah. find a way to get it going. You know. Yeah, and I mean, or just and everyone would have to join in on it because then there'd be half people would be scabs. You know, like right, right. Because all the kids want to just be a game developer. Oh, we'll just hire these people to make games. But then it's like if you want the people who are good, you have to get the union race. You know, and right. Uh, I don't so know. I it's, think I think it'll be tough. Maybe not impossible, but probably close to impossible. Yeah. Well, what do you think the future of game development is? Do you think it's going to stay this way? Hmm. I think some studios, or at least, I mean, this is what I would do. But you know, um, if I were like a big studio, say like Sony or whatever, if I, you know, a couple of big studios, I think it'd be wise to sort of have two kind of teams, or, or to, for lack of a better way to explain it. Mm-hmm. One team would focus on kind of like the AAA blockbuster title where they're going to put, you know, two, three years of work into this game. Off to the side, though, that's where you experiment and you do like these Rocket League type games where... Oh, like you just, said, the 20 of them and hope one... Yeah, you just, he- you just heave stuff over the wall and see what sticks, you know? And then you can kind of double down on some of them if they start to take off and just kind of just throw a caution to the wind and, and see what you can come, come up with and take more risk on the other side. But, you know, but still have your AAA title team doing the two, three-year thing to get one game out that the door. That costs a lot of money, though. Yeah, but I mean, you know... It, it, that's essentially happening at Steam, all this, all the crap games that are getting just thrown against the wall on Steam, and then whatever sticks, sticks. But it's the thing is with the Sony and the publishers, they can always just yank them up off Steam, like, hey, come to our platform, so they don't have to do that, you know? That's true. Because people build games on their own, and the, and the thing is... The problem with the game industry is like people are building games and they're so eager to work they'll do it for, for such low pay and they'll take that crappy environment just to be in the industry, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, I, I don't really know what the future is, but it's it's I think unionization it would be good. I, I've always been a proponent of it. I actually contemplate just helping to get a movement going with that. Um, uh, I think they deserve it. I, I don't like any situation where people are are pushed to that. That extreme, um, yeah. and, then, and then on top of it, are let go. Um, yeah. When I when I worked in the NFL, like I didn't get a day off from July fifteenth when we went to the playoffs deep until January thirtieth. Not a day off. Oh, man. But in the off season, I got six weeks paid vacation. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> in a, in a, yeah, you know what I mean. And plus plus weekends off during the yeah. off season. So it's you know it's it, it's that that kind of catch 22 in a sense it's like hey you know like you want this you want your cake and you too you want to be in the industry but you got to deal with this but if you don't want right. to be in the industry you don't but that's also the, the side of it where like in the nfl like you it's just how, what it is you know you're going to work your butt off you know you're going to work 16 hour days seven days a week for six seven months it yeah is, it is what it is but yeah. you, you you don't you're not fired afterwards but right, for the yeah. gaming industry you do this you work on a project for three years of your life two years of your life at the least for this heartless project, it's, it's what you think about for two and a half years straight. You work on the same thing, you're dedicated, you work with the same people, you do, and then at the very end, they break you because the game is not, hasn't got shipped, and you're working 90 hours a week, so then the thing you love and you put your passion into, you, you resent it. Because, right. You know, again, <laughs> I've, I've worked 85, 90 hours before. It is the worst thing ever. Like, I literally didn't leave for a, yeah. for a week. It, it was miserable. Like, and then afterwards, you're not. You're fired. So it's like, what was that all for? Yeah, you know? no, yeah, I hear you. So I, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, if it was one or the other, I'd be not okay with it, but I would accept it. 
okay, you're working 90 hours a week, but you're rewarded, fine. Okay, hey, you know, you're you're working for this. You're fired after a project, but you, you work normal hours. Okay, fine. Right. But both is a little rough to me. So. Or maybe the studios need to figure out the the balance like because they they probably you know they they well, obviously studios don't care they're making money on that they're saving well, money doing they that they obviously drive the drive a huge deficit they take they they obviously are taking on more employees than they should have but they're trying to get out the door and no, so no, they, they fire the whole studio like all the people all like the the people who don't matter like the artists the developers they keep like the big wigs like the the producers oh, yeah. and the project and the lead designers the lead developers but all the other if, if, if it's like a you know 100 person staff are a big game like 70 percent of them will get fired mm. you know, or just let go and they'll keep the core big big wigs right yeah so mm. it's, it's it's just a mess so i don't know what the future brings but um union would be would be helpful for them could because of that double whammy so. yeah so yeah um all right moving on a little, little more fun one i like this one a lot you'll look you like this too john um <laughs> uh dear john and ted it's been a while since we've jumped on the energy drink train, so I thought I'd put some fuel in that engine. Here's a list I found online with 20 to 25 of the weirdest energy drinks that are actually real. Nice. <laughs> I've heard of some of them, but the rest are pretty nuts. Uh, if you hadn't heard of balls, Ted, you definitely haven't heard of some of these. Enjoy. Um, and there's the, the they sent two articles. There's like 30 of them. So I'm gonna read a couple of these, dude. Did, I, did you have a chance to look at these yet, or will these, will these be surprises? They'll be surprises. Okay, good. Uh, I I didn't read all of them. I didn't want to like look too much into them, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, he sent me to a site, guff.com. 20 energy drinks that are too ridiculous to consume. That's the name <laughs> of this article. Number one, cocaine. <laughs> the name the name it has these blue uh yeah uh, red white and blue cans with cocaine letters like going vertically yep this says cocaine nice um, nice um duracell it's a it's a energy drink can in the shape in the color of a duracell battery like you know oh. copper top and yeah and yeah gold. i don't i don't think i would drink that just because it, i'd be like my drinking battery batteries. acid yep I'm, battery yeah, acid yeah. Um, Bomba. This is a it's an energy drink in the the shape of a grenade. So like, there's a pin that you pull that pops the top off, and and the can is like round or like the glass bottle is like rounded. Called Bomba. It sounds like some of these guys are putting more effort into the packaging. And no, it is. It's all packaging. Me to believe the what's on the inside is probably grotesque. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. Um. Okay. <laughs> Number four. This is the one. Steven Seagal's lightning bolt. Oh, man. <laughs> it has a picture of his face on the bottom with a kanji letter on the front. Like <laughs> He must have signed off on that, which is really weird. Yeah, it has, it has Steven Seagal's <laughs> lightning bolt. And there's a like kanji letter with lightning behind it, and then his face at the bottom of the can with a quote. Man. <laughs> um, number five, mana energy potion. And it looks like a, a little blue mana potion, like, you know, like on in every video game, like the, the, the oh, rounded, yeah, the rounded yeah. vial with a little, yep. little top you pop out. Yeah. It's called, it has a sword. It has mana energy potion with a sword behind it. Oh, <laughs> man. oh my God. Does it say where, like, like what countries these are sold in? Uh, no, uh, this is just saying I'd have to look these up. That'd be interesting. Uh, like, this one is definitely yeah. Japan. Japan. This next one, Super yeah. Mario Power Up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I drink that, that one. That's definitely not licensed by Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's called Spike Shooter. Hmm. Spike. It's just uh, a yellow and black can with a spike across it. Nice. Uh, yeah, sweet. Um, who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you'll love the name of this one. There was no workshopping, no QA, no marketing person on this one. They just made this <laughs> up. Human blood caffeinated energy potion. Oh, yeah. And it those, comes in a blood bag. Those are for the vampires. And it comes in a literal pack. It looks like a blood bag. Yeah, it's like a, a Tropicana sun. Kind yeah, of. yeah, exactly. But like, it looks like a blood bag. You pull, oh, my God. Wow. Man. <laughs> uh, rip it. It's just whatever, rip it. Um, Pac-Man with, wow, there's Pac-Man all over the can. It's like all the ghosts with like the cherries and stuff and like okay. the big old Pac-Man. It looks kind of cool, cool looking can. They, sh- they should have just shaped it like a pellet or something. That would have been right. cool. No, like, but the, the, the can has like a full maze on it and all like the things all it. Like it's like really colorful. Wow. And <laughs> This one's one of my favorites. Commando Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Commando Bear. It has two grizzly bears fighting on the front. 
Nice. That, I bet you that's uh, it's European. Yeah, probably. This one. All right. This is Quagmire's Cherry Pop. All right. Quagmire. Giggity, nice. giggity. <laughs> yeah, it has Quagmire that's on the front. That's like an energy drink. That more sounds like you're drinking like Quaaludes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, a, like, like an aphrodisiac or something like yeah. that. Yeah, A little <laughs> horny drink. Uh, this one's Hua Soldier Fuel. <laughs> Ooh, the next one. Mother in like... Roman t- in like a uh, old English text, mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, chaotic with a demon on the front of it, like a chaotic demon. Yeah, th- and th- balls th- in many cans. Fun yeah, forms. there you go. Uh, pimp I- juice. Di- oh, jeez. <laughs> did what, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, did you did you have you tried balls? I have when not you- tried balls. Uh, it's definitely it's. I mean, it's almost like drinking water. It's it's really not bad at all. I have to look at the caffeine content because I'm caffeine sensitive. I've, I've been drinking tea a lot though because I've been you know overseas and yeah. And I was in England where they drink a lot of tea, and then I was in like you know Asia where they drink a lot of tea, and I like tea. So yeah, I've, I've been getting my caffeine fixed for the last month, so I'm probably addicted now. But whatever. yeah, no, I, I mean I drink my weight and coffee every day. So. Oh yeah, I, this morning <laughs> I you know for this podcast I had to freaking down two cups of tea because i was like dude i'm dying like, like <laughs> two hours of sleep but um pimp juice yeah i got that one that's good this one's called nerd <laughs> just got a picture of nerd. a brain on it yeah, nice cool. okay uh this one this is number 20 this is the one this is was my favorite icp's spasmatic energy sauce you know insane clown posse oh yeah 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 and it has their like faces off the front like uh kind of silhouettes of like their their uh, cartoon masks yeah Wow. Um, here's a couple more from another article. Oh my god. Um, I Ice X cannabis drink. <laughs> okay. Wonder if it's got THC in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got a big cannabis leaf on the front. Um, this one is called. Uh, well, I don't know what the name of this is. It just says. Uh, what is that? Tupac's money hunted Brax energy drink. It has Tupac on the front. Nice. Um, interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay, this one is called Ejaculata, and it has oh. pictures of three little sperm on the front. The secret no energy. Thanks. No thanks. <laughs> oh my god. This one. This can is in the shape of a middle finger. It literally is the hand silhouette, and you you drink out of the middle finger. It's called oh, Fakir. F A K E E R. Oh my god. This one is called Zombie Blood. It's the same as the other blood ones. Have a, oh, a blood bag, but it's green. Oh man! Oh my God! Uh, what else is it? Real Kayada. This is it has a Japanese guy screaming and looking like he want to punch you in the front of the can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Uh, that that was that was good fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it would have been a little more interesting to know like where the, the like regionally they're sold. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of these are probably in Korea, <laughs> yeah, Korea well, and yeah. Russia. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Especially, what, 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 which one stood out to you? Well, the Commando Bear. That that's the one I was like. That's like European or something for yeah. sure. Like that. That's, that's my second favorite. The ICP was my favorite. Yeah, Insane Clown Posse's Spasmatic Energy Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I like- Spasmatic. I mean, yeah, anytime. that's why I like that. <laughs> I, I like the 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 blood bag one, just the name, because like, yeah, it's a blood bag. That's crazy, but they didn't mess with the name. It says Human Blood Caffeinated Energy Potion. Like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, just, there's no like no attempt there. No, uh, no, they're just like straight up like this is what it is. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So moving on. Let, let's do one more email and then get out of here. We there's a bunch today, but uh, we're going long. Um, let's see another fun one. Um, that's serious. Um, that's serious. Uh, that's kind of what we talked about today. Um, we'll do that next time. Um, okay, but this one. Uh, this comes in from Jake from Santa Cruz. It says, John and Ted. He says, uh, Ted, I know you're a health guy, but I just wanted to know, what are you and John's favorite fast food restaurants um, and what do you like to eat there? I'm partial to Wendy's. Fries in the Frosty makes me sweat just thinking about it. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> Santa Cruz. That's a good question. Um, uh. I haven't eaten fast food since April 4th, 2005. Wow, that's pretty but good. But 
I love it. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a help. I mean, I remember, oh man. So now this is all, here's a little asterisk. What I do not consider fast food. Mm. I did not consider Subway fast food because it's kind of healthy. And mm. I didn't at the time consider Chipotle that fast of food because I would get just like the burrito bowl. But mm. I haven't had Chipotle in like five years and I haven't in Subway maybe in like a, two years. But um, but yeah, so, um, but I used to get down on some fast food. Trust me, I was a college football player. So, and hmm, fast food, what's your favorite fast food joint? Man. Or for joints. I would probably have, well, the, I, I can say one that I'm not a fan of. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I'm, please. I don't know if you guys have this out on the West Coast, but they're, I know they're more in the South over on the East Coast over here. Mm-hmm. Sonic. Oh, what? No, I like their, their Sonic's, um, what? Their, um, their desserts are the best. You know, they have a dessert menu of 50 different items. Uh, well, That's I haven't amazing. had those. I haven't had those yet. I, I, so I've had. Oh, their food is bad. Yeah, I mean, there's one that just moved that there's only literally one Sonic like in New England, and it's in Rhode Island, and it's like 20 minutes away from us. And we went there. Oh my god. We went there. I mean, the burgers. I mean, they're not horrible or anything. I mean, they're they're good, you know. But one like the burger, like if you buy a burger by itself, it's like seven or eight bucks. Yeah. And I'm like. Those are not seven or eight dollar burgers. Right, right. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, know? to to rest- you want to go to like Carl's Jr. and get the six dollar burger. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was like, I could go to you know a restaurant, a re- restaurant, get a burger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but I have, I, I, so I have not gotten anything off of the. Uh, Bro, their dessert like- menu is like they have like cheesecake bites Sunday or like brownie uh, milkshake with extra this there or they have like so um, tri- triple decker banana split or like cookie ice cream sandwich like okay, cake so bites or like it's for that then yeah, yeah. Like, they have like um snicker chunked like um ice cream cake pie popsicle I'm so on that okay yeah, it's <laughs> yeah it's amazing they have the the best desserts ever like so many milkshakes so many sundays and banana splits yeah i only go to Sonic just for that like for ice yeah. cream and stuff I um, like uh, I would have to say I like Dairy Queens. I do love Dairy Queen. Yeah, their burgers are are really good. Like, yeah, Dairy Queens for fast good. food, you know, like. And that's another caveat on my asterisk. I don't consider like Dairy Queen like the treats uh, fast food. I just eat the ice cream. I talk <laughs> about the food, but uh, I, yeah, I, I man, I love me a Dairy Queen Blizzard and some you know me ice cream. Um, uh, my, my guilty. Do you like the Cheese Quake Blizzard? Yes, of course. Oh uh, yeah, blizzards are blizzards. I'm not, but I don't. I don't really like cheesecake though. I'm not a che- fan of cheesecake. Oh, really? At all. Oh, uh-huh. dude, you haven't had my wife's cheesecake then. Yeah, I just don't eat cheesecake. I'd rather have ice cream than than fatty cheesecake because like you, I'd rather eat fatty ice cream than. You wouldn't cheesecake. want a Nutella cheesecake. No, I, I don't like cheesecake. It's not my thing. Like oh, I just, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll eat it, but cheesecake is not my jam. I um, remember uh, on a segment of Jay Leno when they first came out with the Cheesequake Blizzard. He mm-hmm. was like, "How fat are we yeah. when?" Cheesecake has to be, you know, like the ingredient and not the main thing. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would have to say Dairy Queen probably. Like we really don't have much like kind of in New England when it comes to. Like, I think you, you have guys the usual probably, ones, right? Yeah, we have like you know McDonald's, Burger King, you know right, KFC. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, you those know, aren't Wendy's good. we have, but really that's kind of it. But yeah. My my secret pleasure would would back in the day was Burger King. I love Burger King's burgers and like everything. Yeah, I used to I'll get off the burger. Burger King over McDonald's any day. I, but McDonald's makes me vomit in my mouth. Yeah, the smell, it's, it's, smell of it. Oh, yeah, God. It's, it's, I do like the breakfast sandwiches, like the egg McMuffin or something. That's fine. But I, uh, the last time I ate McDonald's was probably in the nineties, like ninety nine or something. I did ninety eight. I just it just disgusting. Gross. Um, what, but yeah. What do you got? What do you think of like? Because you guys have, like you mentioned, Carl's. You have uh, In and Out Burger. Oh, right? yeah, In and Out is a California thing. Yeah. 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 Love In and Out. Um, it's fantastic. Um, I haven't had it in eleven years, but it's it's amazing. Um, I miss it. <laughs> yeah. A uh, double double animal style. Animal style fries. Yep. And uh, and a Neapolitan shake. Yep. And <sighs> done. Nice. Yeah. The, so uh, what? So so then, what's your favorite? Like, if you you know you were forced to eat fast food, I'd probably do Burger King. No joke. Or, or actually, one of the good ones actually is Chick Fil A. Is pretty good. Oh yeah. You know we have again. There's like literally one in New England. It's in Massachusetts. It's like Chick Fil A is really 30, good. Thirty minutes away from us, we went one time just to you know quality. Just, we had to check it out. First of all, the place was jammed. Like yep. we, it, it was packed. Like. 
So we got in there, and man, it was really good. Like, yeah, it's waffle a quality fries. fast food. Yeah, yeah those it's weird. Waffle fries are crazy good. Yep. I was like, man, Season waffle fries. They're yeah. they're the bomb diggity. Yeah, yeah. That, they're. De- it was definitely re- that was really good. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, fast food. Yeah, for-, for sure. I like Arby's curly fries. I used, I used to be good. My jam. I used to like the curly. I used, I used to go to Arby's just for that. I used to love when Arby's did five for five. You get five. Oh, yeah. Sandwiches for five bucks. I was like, yep. oh yeah. I used to love when Burger King did the thirty-nine and forty-nine cent cheeseburgers in high mm-hmm. school, and so yeah. uh, my buddies and I would take ten bucks each and just load up and get twenty cheeseburgers and house like <laughs> seventeen, eighteen of them. No joke, I would eat seventeen. Like, man, that's my no, record. No one why you hate McDonald's? Yeah, well, no, they, <laughs> hey, that was on. That was at Burger King. I did that one. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, like I would literally just get take a ten dollar bill and just hand it to them, and they give me like eighteen cheeseburgers, and I would. As many as this will buy, please. <laughs> yeah, I just go here, here, and then like they kill it. And my my record was seventeen, but on average, no joke though, like that was like on a just a crazy day. We were just kind of like playing off each other, but on average, it would be easily twelve. Like twelve would go down. <laughs> yep. yep, twelve cheeseburgers, easy. Yep, and we like have a big pile of barbecue sauce and ketchup and stuff. We just dunk them in there and just eat and, and play. And we play um uh NCAA. Uh, football <laughs> or yeah. is uh is uh i know in the movie pulp fiction that big kahuna burgers that's a real place right i think so yeah okay i, I, I know big boys is is but that's right down the road for me okay. i was yeah. gonna say that's not a chain is it the big kahuna place that's probably is, or is it just like a single you know i i i, I can tell you on that i'll have to check okay. it out i don't know um but yeah i think burger is good um what, you know what i for it's not Mexican food, but uh, Taco Bell is kind of oh, good. Oh no, no, it is not good. Dude. It's not good, but like it, it tastes like it. Just you eat it, and you're like, okay, this is this is it is what it is. Like uh, okay, they, they probably lace it with crack. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, totally. I used to eat like I used to eat chalupas. I haven't had Taco Bell. I can't. I don't know when. But I used to eat Taco Bell. But but like the other taco places, like Del Taco, is much better. Or or other thing. But like I used to eat Taco Bell. I mean, fast food is good. Like it's it's it's. Just nasty, cheap food, and it, and it works. Well, I just don't eat it anymore because it's yeah. you know, health wise. I like but... Chipotle's burritos. Those things are wicked good. I see. I don't consider Chipotle fast food, but yeah, <laughs> no, but no, it, it is. Uh, I haven't eaten it in a while. I'm actually over Chipotle. I, I won't go near. I can't eat it anymore. It makes me sick <laughs> to my stomach because in college, um, there was a Chipotle on campus, and I lived on campus, and it was no joke in the same like building structure as my apartment. So uh, I would just walk it. down, simply go in there, and I would eat. Probably two two burritos a day. Man. Because I would get two at a time. And sometimes I'd eat three. Like, I'd eat for lunch and dinner. Like, my typical lunch was, before practice, was two Chipotle burritos. Man. Full. To the brim. Like, <laughs> or, I get, or if I was really crazy, you get the uh, the um, quesadilla wrap burrito. So they'd make you a quesadilla, and then they put your burrito inside the quesadilla. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That that's the secret menu. So like they, you know how big those tortillas are, right? They're oh, huge. Dude, I have no idea how they jam so much stuff they do in those things. It's, the, it's, tor- the tortillas are like like sixteen it, and a half, eighteen it's inches amazing. long. Yeah. So so they 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 literally lay it across the the, the, the little warm rubber. They put cheese all across it, right? They yeah. They put another tortilla on top of it. And they put a little bit of sour cream in there too. Another tortilla on top of it. They cook it. Like lightly, and then they melt the cheese, and then they take it out, and then they put it on the thing, and then they make your burrito, and it's like, yeah. and they wrap your burrito in the quesadilla, and it's just the greatest thing ever. It's that, like a 2,000 calorie shot to the head. That's brutal. <laughs> oh, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, man, you're making me hungry now. <laughs> um, yeah, um, anything else, John? What was the most insane thing you ate at Indonesia? It was like octopus? Like what oh, was? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did, um, did you eat some kind of mystery meat? You had no idea what you were eating. No, but our cab driver did talk about how the succulent, how delicious dog was, dog meat. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, I asked him if there's anywhere I could go get dog, and he's like, uh, "We don't eat it as much anymore." There's a lot of stray dogs there. Holy crap! Um, but I was like, because like Shauna was down too. I was like, I'll try some dog. Like I, I wanted to try it. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it. And nah. uh, he's like, no, not really. But hey, we used to eat it growing up when we were really poor. And I was like, oh. He's like, but it's been like 20 years. But I, I love dog. It's a very, very strong meat. So you have to cook it right. If you don't cook it yeah. right, it, it doesn't taste good. He right. said it, it reminds him of lamb. I was like, oh, interesting. So, uh, but no, I didn't eat anything super crazy like that. Right. I, we ate just they they eat really pretty good food. Um, as uh, they eat. Um, Nasi ayam. Um, ayam is chicken. Nasi means rice. It's okay. Like it's chicken rice dish, like fried. Egg. I learned a lot of Norwegian. Or Norwegian. Um, <laughs> in, in Indonesian when I was there. Um, so I learned a lot of food stuff like goreng is fried. 
um, ayam, chicken, nazi, rice, um, bakso, meatball, you know, all these different things that I was just learning. Um, and, uh, yeah, they have, uh, well, their main thing is nasi kampur, which is a kind of, they put the rice, this fried rice in the middle and they put like six or seven little dishes around it. Like these little corn fritters and like duck, um, mm. chicken, like it's little vegetable dishes and that, that was really good. Um, mm. but they, they eat really, really just typical stuff. Just like nothing that you would think is like super, super crazy and, and, and ethnic. They eat a lot of bananas and fruit and fr- like chicken oh. fried and soup and noodles and just. Very very solid food. You can eat it, you know. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't nothing nothing crazy. Okay. Say. But uh, I did eat like saying when we were uh, on the boat, I ate fish that was caught right like yeah, literally that's... two hours before. Yeah. <laughs> he caught it. I don't. Was too much it. pressure than that. <laughs> no, he caught it with like and lined it with his hands. You know, like he was Man. throwing. He was casting it like over, like throwing it and just pulling it in with his fingers. You know, the line. And he, he he would use like the um, the old squid like that he didn't. Oh like, right. The, yep. Because we had fried calamari for for dinner, but he used the pieces that he didn't cook with, like the like the little head piece and all the stuff. Yeah. And he used that as bait, and he was just pulling in fish after fish. And I was like, yeah, he pulled in like you know six or seven of them. You know, threw back like three because they're too small, but the ones that he cooked were like pretty big, about you know, twelve inches long, thirteen, fourteen inches long, big, nice solid fish. He cooked like two or three of them up for dinner, and we just eat them. It was good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. Um. But I had a lot at the resort. I had uh, oh man, sorry. Here. Last thing before we go, at the resort I had uh, buffets, you know, breakfast. Oh, that and it, and it was a five. It was a five star resort. <laughs> it was a five star resort, right? So this food was insane. I had every morning for breakfast four to five plates of food. <laughs> and these tiny little Indonesian people. Indonesia is the shortest country in the world. Remember we talked yeah. about this? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so. I'm these little tiny people look at me and I'm just like housing this food. I go up and I could I have another omelet, like my third omelet, and like they're making like three crepes, eating like four or five pieces of French toast, like bacon and sausage and rice and eggs and like five plates of fruit and just like this and that and rice and just like chowing this food because <laughs> you know like cause in the mornings we'll like. We'll we'll go and do something like we'll go for a hike or run around or we went kayaking and so I didn't eat in the morning because it's too early and I'm all off you know so yeah, it's like yeah. I didn't eat breakfast or I might eat like a, a banana or something really quick and we we're just on the go so it's like ten o'clock and I haven't eaten yet and I've been up since like six so I'm like dying I want to eat like a freaking house so I walk <laughs> in there and I'm like strutting in there and I just like sit down and I'm just like ha like give me some passion on potatoes and like three omelets and, <laughs> and it's a buffet. So you walk around and just scoop up your plate. Plus you can order stuff too. And I was just destroying it like every day. And they'd see me come in and be like, Oh crap. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the kitchen runs out of food because of 10. Yeah, it, it was, it was, but you know, but I was just, I was going to town every day. It, it was, it was great. <laughs> Next time, you, if you book another time there, they're gonna charge you extra. Oh, we remember you. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Every time I go to a country and if there's a buffet, they look at me like I'm insane. Even here in America, they look at me like I'm insane. I can throw it down. But uh, but yeah. then like the, the problem is with that. But then I get full for like the day, and then I don't eat until I like, get night for dinner, right. which is not good. But yeah. because I eat like three thousand calories in one shot sitting, you know, so I'm like good for a while, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, because like no no joke, my breakfast for like you know. 3,100, 3,500 calories, just right there. <laughs> it was that's good. All right, I think that's going to do it, John. What do you think? Yeah, I think we're good to go. All righty. So, um, yeah, it, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back on track. We have some good shows coming up. And, um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna get uh, into some more details about the stuff you're doing here um, pretty quick. And yeah. um, everyone's going to jump on that. It'll, it'll be fun. So, um, so yeah, um, if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can do so at our email address that I just said, right? Well, what was that again? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Epicow.com. I'm, I'm tired. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, you can do so on social media as well. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, we're at JTEX Gamecast. Um, my personal Twitter and Instagram is TedWords44. John is JNado7. 
Yep. J N A D E A U seven. Um, join our Facebook group. Um, it's cool. You can talk in there, chat. We post a lot of stuff. Um, enjoy that. Um, you can find us on iTunes. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and write us a review. We're, we're, we're ranking up there. We're doing good content for you every week, and I say we want to we want to know how we're doing. If if you like it, give us five stars. Yeah. If you don't, don't rate us. Please just email us, and we'll fix what we want. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah. And then if you want to go to the website to check out some stuff we're doing, all the boss battle stats, and you know. Um, old episodes um, you go to www.raptorcow.com slash JTEX Gamecast and like we said the email address is that JTEX Gamecast at raptorcow.com so yeah and, and until next week John um, I think that's it so um, yeah peace out see you later we're done see you later game over <laughs>